Let's go. All right. Well, let's Dungeons and Dragons. Let's dive into uh, session number three of Trouble in Thandir. Last we left off, our group of daring and perhaps even brash adventurers had made their way to the waters within the territory of Haldir, where they were aggressively met by the Thandir Navy. Once boarded, these adventurers came face to face with Erevan, the captain of the Haldir arm of the Navy, who quickly did away with the forged document presented by Captain Barnard that the adventurers had so hastily thrown together to save their own skins. Fearing that Barnard would turn against them, the adventurers preemptively turned their weapons on him, only to have their aggression quickly halted by Erevan and his soldiers. I pulled out my morning star. Without pause, Trago presented his official summons, and when recognized as authentic, the Navy escorted the Willow Weeper into the harbor. Upon arrival, the adventurers alone and no one from the Willow Weeper were allowed free leave to the city in order to arrange overland passage north of Thayendir. And on their way out of the harbor, they were met by a curious and somewhat mad elderly man who had a certain affinity for Bolin and who left him with a mysterious gift, after which the group headed into town to find a local tavern for some respite and refreshment. Not more than a block down the Cobblestone Avenue, the group came upon a surprising scuffle on the street. A small human with the name of Niv was being dragged out of the establishment, the Crow's Crown, by two burly dwarves and was about to be punished for cheating in a card game. The group immediately stepped in and, having calm tempers, they entered into the tavern, where their <laughs> merriment including the, included the consumption of not a few tankards of ale, the winning and losing of a couple of arm wrestling matches, as well as... Oh, that's right. <laughs> the, oh, winning and losing. That. As well as a spectacular right. and utterly unexpected operatic performance <laughs> by none other than Green Shanks the Great. <laughs> Following a good amount of discussion, the group begrudgingly decided to trust in Niv's knowledge of Haldir in order to help them find transportation north. And after stopping to do a bit of shopping in the local market, the group trailed Niv to a somewhat shady place on the edge of town called the Wandering Widow, run by a somewhat shady character named Danish. Upon agreeing to deliver a somewhat shady package to a contact in Thayendir, Danish, or Danish, Danish, <laughs> Danish I'm going to say Danish <laughs> from now on, Danish outfitted the group with four horses. And with this, the group rode out, heading towards Haldir's northern gate, that opens into the vast grassland stretching north towards Thayendir. Well, my adventures, what would you like to do? I think we should camp so we can Wait, heal what up time a is bit. it? What time is it again? <laughs> yeah. So you guys are heading out. I mean, it's, it's like uh, early afternoon, like one or two o'clock. <laughs> so we don't need to camp now. <laughs> well, I, want, right? I, want to, I want to get some hit points back. And then so you uh, want to act- wait. Why don't we travel until nightfall, and we'll just—I mean—we'll just make sure that we're keeping okay. an eye out. If anything looks okay. fishy, okay. we'll stop. Okay, but if we get the jumped and I die, <laughs> all right, I, that's fine. I will take care of you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> For how big you are, you're very uh, scared about. Yeah. A little bit of a pussy, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't gonna. S- oh, you said it. Not uh, me. Are we? Dan we're on horses, almost correct? Burned me to death. Yeah. So you guys, you guys got four horses from from Danish, and uh, you you just got on them now. And you're starting to ride up this avenue. It's a sort of cobblestone avenue lined with these Tudor style style houses, and you come to the gate mm-hmm. uh, where there's some some soldiers there, uh, and they see that you're going to be exiting uh, north out of the gate. Okay. How many? And how many days ride is it again? So to Thayendir, it's going to be at least a couple days, but you you can okay. probably make it to Mittendorf if you if you move quickly. You got some instructions from from Danish, and uh, they were they weren't very good instructions. He just said head north, follow the well traveled road. Apparently, okay. this is a, a pretty well traveled uh, a line here from okay. Thayendir to to the harbor. All right, what, so why don't we just let's just go yeah. until nightfall, and we'll camp or, camp at or we get to Mittendorf. Yeah, let's right, go as yeah. far as we can, and if we get to Mittendorf by nightfall, great. Then we'll find it in to uh, have a, a redo of of our, our song and dance. <laughs> Wait, did we'll, you we'll go on tour. Block there, oh, my God. Go on tour. <laughs> Drago, we're going on tour. Green Shanks World Tour. 
world tour of Fe- of Fe and Deer. Yeah, we're hijacking your campaign, Matt. We're straight straight up yeah. just going on a musical tour. Awesome. Where can Thanks, I dude. where can I buy a robot? Uh, what, what's a robot? I don't know. It's a robot. A robot. A, a robot. So you guys you guys yeah. head north and you, you pass through the the Let's gate go. here and um, the soldiers let you pass because you're obviously leaving so they don't have anything they need to check you with. Um, but you notice as soon as you get out of the gate. <laughs> Oh, no. You see that, that the landscape opens up, and the horses now, um, you can tell that they are, they're horribly kept, and they're horribly trained. Danish oh. obviously wasn't going to give Niv his best horses, and he gave you guys some really garbage horses. So as soon as you, as soon as you pull out of the gate, the horses I mean, wouldn't we have some... known this before? I mean, as soon as we got on the horses, wouldn't we have... Well, I mean, no one really asked. Apparently <laughs> not. You're right. You're just, Apparently you we didn't give a shit. Horses and started yeah. heading north. Yeah. <laughs> you could have done like a, a I don't well, know, hold, a, hold an animal handling check or let's, something. Let's, let's turn around and buy some good horses. Do you want to get some we good horses? We don't have enough money to buy well, good are, horses. Wait, 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 wait. Are these horses just like... Like passing out on the side of the road, or <laughs> can we ride them? Are they functional? Do they they're, have four they're legs? Landworthy. I mean, they're they're going to be fine. They'll get you there. They're just not well. They're very well trained. I feel but like so, there's okay. a reason you're telling so us. We're this, just, so we're just. But there is a reason to make, I'm telling you this. We're just going to have to make sure that we tie them up along a post wherever we stop, so they don't run away. <laughs> there you go. So as you guys enter into this, it opens up into this big landscape and suddenly now the horses are hit with all these smells and sounds and all these new experiences. Oh no. And no. the horses, all four of them simultaneously get <laughs> spooked. Uh, like oh, I said, they're not very well trained. So each of you need now to take an athletics check to see if you're actually going to stay on your spooked horse. Go ahead, all of you, each of you roll a d20 and take an athletics check. Groggle, you probably have really good athletic bonus. Mm-hmm. Natural 20. Whoa! <laughs> 19. Natural Excellent. 26. 26. 6. <laughs> and, I, and I got a 10. <laughs> My negative 2 bonus. Oh, yeah. So Bolin, like, he's... He's he's like standing up in his saddle, like cruising out, like showing <laughs> yeah. off. Like, no, hands, totally, no hands, no I'm hands. I'm like surfing, like on Team Wolf. Oh, and Grog is right behind him, like you know, kind of like whipping his lasso and in the air. Um, and unfortunately, Niv, the horse takes off, and you you fall immediately backwards. And as you fall, you strike the front legs of of the other horse. And Tregu, your horse also jumps up, and you also fall off. Uh, so each of you. Niv, take for, first of all, Niv, you're going to take a, a total of uh, of three hit point damage. Trago, you take two hit point damage, bludgeoning damage. And your horses begin to sort of gallop off north. Can I chase after them and try and catch one? You can. Give me an animal handling check. Ooh. Oh, all right. Sounds... Uh, nine. <laughs> nine. So I'm gonna you, do the same. I'm you try and grab same. the horses, that's but it, they're they're it. not responding to you. Grago comes up behind Shit. you. Fourteen passes. Fourteen. Okay, Grago comes behind, and he's amazingly because he's sort of you know has such a good amazing ride here. He's able to grab both horses with with uh, with both hands, pull the reins in, slow them down, settle them down, uh, and they're under control now. Okay. So I. Grago, do you I, have a little problem there with your <laughs> with your horse? Well. I'm a small guy, man. It's hard for me to control this shit. <laughs> we need to put a um, like a basket on the front of on the front of my horse to keep to keep you in instead, like a sidecar. Get <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> those those kid seats you put in the bag of bikes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Trago's not too proud to do that. Yeah, like I could definitely do that. Do you, does anybody I, have a basket? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm not the only one that fell off my horse, damn it. Yeah, nobody you, cares about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody does care about you. Yeah, nobody knows who you are, Niv. You're just some strange guy who got them some crappy horses. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be yeah, honest hell? here. Yeah. Tim, just uh, two, one session ago, he almost killed me with fire. That was like, two sessions ago. Oh. That was like a month ago. Well, yeah. in like game time, that was what, like three days? Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am going to throw uh, Niv a... Uh, little bit of a nasty look and uh for the shitty horse horses that he got us so how far out of town are we now we 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 didn't have to pay for the horses though correct i thought we did buy them 
No, nope. we didn't. No, you no, Niv gave, gave you the horses with the stipulation that you guys were going to deliver this uh, package for him. I mean, these yeah. these are literally gift horses. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> that Thanks for pointing right. that out. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. That was a really good one. Right. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna get back on my horse. All right, you get back on your horse. Yeah. Um, are we Niv, like? Okay, never mind. Niv, you Go do ahead. the same, I assume. Yeah. All right, and I, the horses, the horses yeah, are pretty settled them. down now that Grog came with his, you know, heavy, strong hands and settled them down. So your horses are, are pretty good now. Um, you guys are going to head off north. Is there anyth anything else you want to do or say or um, uh, talk about on your way there? Do, do we have enough rations and everything to make it? I thought you had said we did. Well, yeah. Trago, you have some rations. Yeah, uh, we all, like, we all should have rations in our, in our inventories. I don't. I mean, huh. So I have an. I have an. Ex I have an explorer's pack. Would that include yeah, rations? That has, that has ten days of rations. Okay. Oh, so, so then, then we're I good. Have, yeah. Yeah. You're good. I, I would hope. You, I would hope you guys aren't that stupid that you just take yeah. off <laughs> on an overland <laughs> journey without any food or water. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> like, can we just agree that like you just have to tell us when we need to reduce our gold and we just buy rations so we All don't right. end up with oh. dysentery. Like an auto, like an automatic removal from your like credit card or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Monthly statement. All right, so let's, we're going to Mittendorf. All right, so you're heading north. Along so do we want to have someone scout ahead, or are we just going to yeah. go? Yeah, who's got good perception? I do. I've got. I have plus five perception. I have my my perception is pretty crap. So whoever has got the highest would probably be want to be in the front. But I also am the cleric. I probably shouldn't be in the lead. Yeah, Danny, what's your perception? <laughs> Mine's a whopping plus two. Hey, are you playing right, World of something. Warcraft still? No, I'm petting the dog. Oh, okay. me? No, no. Danny was playing World of Warcraft before. Oh. So, right. Bolin, are you going to ride ahead yeah. then a little bit? Well, I don't feel comfortable I mean, riding I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm I don't I'm feel comfortable off. being yeah. the face of this. Mm. I'm just riding. Crew. F it. Mm -hmm. You're just going to ride. Okay, okay go ahead. I'll and, just, um, I'll, I'll stay back and let him take as take the lead. I'll be right, a good um, like 15 feet behind him. Why don't you? Why don't, why don't all of you, each of you, go ahead and give me a perception roll? Um, just go ahead and roll a d20. Got a fourteen. Seven. Ten. 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 Okay, so you don't really hear or see much of anything. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> it's yeah. a really crappy rolls, all four of you. Oh man. <laughs> So you guys really don't see or hear anything, um, nothing strange at all, and you follow the path. Um, the path is pretty, it's pretty well marked. Um, yeah, so there's nearly no problem. As long as the weather's good, you have no problem sticking on the trail. Uh, this is obviously a very well-traveled trail from, from the, the capital of Thandir down to their biggest port city. Uh, so you just cruise along, um, and after a couple hours, um, you see in the distance uh, a group, something's moving there. Uh, go ahead and give me another perception check, all of you. Yeah. Are we able to? Is this? Can we consider this a short rest on our travels, Natural or, one. or not? I would say not because you're okay. um, you're you're. It's yeah, it's not really demanding. restful on a horse, no, yeah, especially with our horses. Natural 17. one, if yeah, what do we uh, take? What are we rolling? Uh, give me another perception roll. Seventeen for me. Ooh, uh, twenty-four. Whoa. So Niv is just off, like, staring at the flowers and looking at the sun <laughs> and just whistling, having a great time now that he's back on his horse. Um, Bolin, you see in the distance uh, what what looked like a, just a big blob of people before. Now you're able suddenly to pick out that you see it. It's a large military caravan heading south towards Haldir from Thandir, apparently, on the same road. Uh, and the, car the caravan you can see is led by several well-armored cavalry units flying the banner of Thandir. You can recognize it from this distance even. Um, and you can see there's some supply carts. There's some, some uh, different people there that are part of the prep team for making food and all that. Um, and behind them, infantry units of spearmen, um, unit after unit after unit. Uh, and they're starting to move down the path uh, right where you guys are riding north. You're obviously going to eventually intersect each other's paths. Hmm. Do they see us? Do we want? I don't think so. Do we want to let yeah. them cross, or do we want to meet them? Well, We're going to the same are spot. Are you telling us? Because I'm asking. And, yeah. Well, I'm asking. Me and Niv are them. admiring the flowers. Because I had a pretty <laughs> well, terrible. Oh, yeah. Pool. So, so yeah. hey, everyone. There's there's a group of soldiers that yeah. are coming. That are coming from the north. They're coming from the north, 
right? Uh, yeah, they're coming from the okay. from the north, heading south. Yeah, I say guys... I say we just keep riding on. Uh, we've got the we've got the summons, our summonses. There they could be, be a, a good they could be a good escort for us. But they're well, headed towards so. They're headed, I, to, but the, we're both headed towards Thandir. No, no, and they're flying the Thandir flags. Oh, Matt, yeah. can you drop what what we're looking at here, quick? So you're looking at a, a unit, uh, uh, actually a big group of soldiers that are coming down, and there's cavalry units in the front flying the, the flag of Thandir towards us. Towards you, they're heading south. Yep, yeah. they're heading south they're... on the on the path. You guys are heading north now, so you're going to end up eventually running right into them on the on the path. I would say keep let's keep riding until we get like right close to them, and then kind of just pull off to the side and let them Wait. pass. So sorry. So they're we're they're headed yeah. towards. Um... They're headed towards Haldir. Okay, so yeah, okay. city we just left. Yeah, where you guys yeah. just left. So they're yeah. coming opposite the opposite direction of exactly. us. Exactly. So, heading, heading. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll just um, put my hood up. Mm. Just gonna put my hood up and just ride very nonchalantly across oh, past yeah. them. And excellent. I'll, uh, make it, I'll tip my really I'll tip my head when asshole. they cross. <laughs> I'll tip my head when when they cross, and we'll just keep moving. Here's here's something I, I needed to ask you guys before we started. Um, can you give me your passive perceptions again? I need this for later on as well. Um, can you look uh, down on your sheets there? I didn't write these down. Oh, you need them. Yeah, I need, to, I need to know it. Groggle, you I'm have 11? 11. Okay. Is it I passive? Wiz- yeah, passive wisdom. Yeah, yeah, passive perception wisdom. Bottom so left. So 13. 13. Okay. Uh, Bowen, you have nine. You only have a nine? Wow, Trago. Yeah. And yeah, I need to... Niv, what do you have down there? You're at a 12, uh, right? 12, yep. Okay. So let me let me keep that in mind there. Uh, all right. As, you, um, as, you're, as you're cruising along... Suddenly, Niv and Groggle, um, sorry, Niv, Groggle, and Bowl and Tregle, you're still smelling the flowers. Um, <laughs> you notice a, a sound off to your, your right. Mm-hmm. And as you turn and look, you notice immediately that there are two soldiers, scout soldiers, that are part of this party. So they're still a little ways off yet, part of this party. Two scouts riding up to check out the path in front of, the obviously, the military caravan. And one of the, one of the soldiers yells out, Hey, you there! State your purpose on the trail! Shouting out to to uh, let's see, um, Groggle, you were in the lead. Okay, oh, no. and I say, <laughs> and I say, I say, uh, by order of summons, we're headed to see what's his butt. I, it's very important that I use those exact words. What's Nelephon. his butt? <laughs> yeah, what's... <laughs> by, or, by by order of summons, we are <laughs> on the trail to to visit Melathon. Oh, Groggle's not the most eloquent. <laughs> Uh, the soldier, the soldier. Um, I mean, he he immediately recognizes the name Melathon, uh, and he knows who that is. He pulls out his sword, rides I pull over. Out my to... summons. Not you pull my, your summons. Not my okay. morning star. <laughs> well, I fumble in my bag for it, actually. All right, so he rides up to you, and you pull out your summons, and you give your summons to him. Um, and he pulls the summons back, and he begins to look at it, and immediately he recognizes the seal. Um, the 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 seal from from Tyrius, and he starts to read through the summons, um, and he looks up. Tyrius. Yep. Also, Tyrius is the governor. I'm, I'm, governor I'm, I'm, I'm going to look okay. at his sword. And I'm going to go. What are you going to do with that? He looks at you and says, "Well, of course, you know we need to keep a tight eye on the people who are on this tra- on this uh, trail before our army units come." And at at this point, I I'm I'm kind of riding forward to rescue. <laughs> Uh, Grog yeah, we've all and, we've all caught yeah. up with him by now, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm, I'm running forward here and okay. try to. We're gonna. We should the encircle him. Let's yeah. encircle the scout. Well, no, no. Let's not. Let's not get aggressive with him. <laughs> okay, you're right. Let's not get aggressive with. Him. <laughs> I just I just want to go make sure that Groggle's not going going to go ham on uh, <clears throat> on the soldier. So I mean, he he sees the summons and he looks at you, Groggle, and he says. Um, does this summons apply to you only, or does, does this apply to others? I say, I'll pull unfortunately, out mine too. it's all. Yeah. And you pull out your summons as well. Yeah, I'll pull mine out. Okay. I'll pull mine and out that, as well. And uh... So he, he rides over to you guys as well, pulls your summons up, looks at them. Uh, then he looks at you, Niv, <laughs> and, <laughs> expecting uh, to receive a summons from I, you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say is... Uh, this is our friend uh, that we've hired as a guide to escort us to Thandir. Take a deception check. Yeah. You and your lies. Deception is pretty good here. Oh, 17 plus 6. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. 23. Yeah. 
So he looks at you and says, uh, he says, oh, of course, I would have assumed as much, uh, judging by the state of his clothing. Um, all right. Uh, he takes your summons, turns back to his partner, um, and you, you, you hear him whispering something. Um, and he turns back to you and says, wait here. And he takes your summons and rides off um, back to the main group. And you're left there with one soldier uh, looking a little nervous. <laughs> he's holding his, he doesn't have his sword out, but he's holding his hand on, on the hilt. Um, just kind of staring you guys down, just trying to make sure everything's okay. Uh, I'll, say, we... uh, I'll, I'll ask him what, uh, how's the travel come here going? often? How's the he, uh, <laughs> he looks at you, he doesn't say much. He's, he, you can tell he's, uh, he's not really. How's the traveling to... going? Talking. <laughs> Do you speak have... English? He says, um, he looks at you guys and says, well, we have a, we have a mission that we are to be, uh, taking a care, care of accomplishing and how dear where are you from he says oh i'm not sure that's any of your business i shout out right we're from right away <laughs> he says ah indeed that's probably why you have no idea of what is happening here in thay and dear explain uh, he steps back uh it steps back a little bit he obviously doesn't really want to chat with you guys he's here he's here to make sure you don't do anything crazy make sure you're not a threat um, so he, he kind of steps back and looks away. Is there any, is there anybody behind him or around him, like in the distance that we could see that might be hiding or like Bowman that might be trying to flank us or take another perception check. Twenty-five. Twenty-four. 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 Um, you, you can see off in the distance, um, behind slightly behind him, a little bit to the left, you see there's there's another uh, unit of two uh, scouts that are out riding out in the opposite direction, um, either to flank okay. you guys or to, to, to check out somebody else on the trail or to check ahead on the trail. But that's all you see. There's no one behind this guy. Can I okay. can I cast a spell on this guy to get him to talk? <laughs> uh, you, you may. Can I charm person? You certainly can. Because the charmed creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance. Okay. So will that, I mean, will that... Oh, yeah. Creature that or would, human? Creature would be a human as well. A creature yeah. is yeah. a human, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So go for it. Yeah, what is... um? Give me the details of your spell. Uh, it's a duration's one hour. Uh, attempt to charm a humanoid you can see within range. Has to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, if it fails a saving throw, it's charmed until the spell ends or until we do anything harmful to it. Charmed creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance. When the spell ends, the creature knows it was charmed by you. Okay. Hey, guys. Uh, guys absolutely. Guys, one, one second. Liam just wants to say hi quick. Hey, Liam. Hey, Liam. Liam. <laughs> Liam. Well, you got to... Oh, no, he's nervous. <laughs> say hi. It's just Matt. Ch Uncle What's Chad, up, dude? Tim, and he's, our next, he's our next, yeah. uh, next player here. Someday you get to play Dungeons and Dragons. So I just roll a d20. So, no, actually, my... I need to roll that. What is your DC? You have, a, I think, a 13. Is that right? On your 14. spell DC? 14? 14. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a wisdom check on that. And no, he he <laughs> fails it. So you see his his uh, his tough look. Uh, he, he begins to sort of soften up. And you see a sort of slight smile come to his face. And he looks at you and says, friend, what is it you are asking me? Well, I want to know what you meant when you said if we knew what was going on. And he, he's obviously charmed now, so he's, uh, he, he's treating you as a confidant, someone that he can trust. And he, he, he looks at you, all of you guys, <clears throat> and he says, he says, well, there's, of course, there's been some turbulence, something going on lately in Theandir, and Tyrius has been uh, ramping up the, the fortifications both in Theandir and in Haldir. We are being sent down this unit to fortify Haldir Harbor. Uh, some of us will be joining the Navy um, for, for deckhands. Uh, the Navy will be increasing in force. Uh, there's obviously some sort of military increase happening right now that we are a part of. The and little that's why shit we're just put ice to fort back. Fortify against what? And he, do he doesn't really know. He, he says uh, that, that kind of information we're not really privy to. But we know that there is something happening right now. And there's a lot of troop movements, and this caravan you see right here, what I'm a part of, is part of that movement. What, what's in the caravan? 
So you see in the caravan, it, it, there's a bunch of spearmen, um, uh, there's cavalry units, there's a bunch of extra men, hired hands. Some of them will be coming down and, and be working on ships. Others will be uh, positioned in in Haldir, in the harbor. So they're just ask, ramping up their forces. <clears throat> I'm going to ask if there's been uh, an, uh, an increase of like outlaws on the road to Therendir, or if it's been pretty calm this last couple of months. <laughs> He 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 kind of smiles at you and says, huh, "You really aren't from around here, are you?" Uh, of course, there's been a, a ramping up of outlaws, and that's part of the reason why we we have all these scouting people in front of us. Have you have you never heard of of the outlaws that run the that run the area around here, the resistance force? Uh, I'm gonna say what? I'm not from or I am not from around here, and uh, that we are quite unfamiliar and. Asking right. if there's a, a a chance that we could get a small escort. <laughs> I, I suppose it's not him. What? That's oh, enough, dude. Ice on the back. Track. I suppose he's this guy's just a scout. So I yeah, I'm just gonna say no. We're not from around here, uh, and uh, mm. that we're unfamiliar with the area. That's why we hired Niv, our guide. And he he leans in and he says, "I'm not one for speculation, but." I have heard that there is something going on with the resistance, and part of the resistance has has been ramping up their forces as well. Uh, what we are doing here in Haldu Harbor, though, is mostly against Teravin, against King Felwyn's forces, against the Aldian allegiance. That's what we are mostly facing. But and that's okay. No, keep going. I'm sorry. But there, but there are rumors. There are rumors that the resistance has something as planned as well. So we're trying to ramp up in Thandir, in Haldir, everywhere because there's word that something is going down. Uh, <clears throat> what? What? Uh, where did we just come from? You just came from Haldir. Haldir. Yeah. Yep. Ha uh, is Haldir? Do they think Haldir is in league with the resistance? Do they think they're working together, or...? No, Haldir's not, not in league with the Resistance, I don't think. I mean, there are Resistance forces uh, scattered throughout throughout Falandir Island, throughout okay. Thandir, throughout Haldir, but they, they have small little sects and little groups. Uh, that's part of the problem with them, is we, we can never find them and root them out. So, of course, there is Resistance everywhere. We just don't know where they are. But Haldir, no. Haldir is a, is a strong, fortified fort for Thandir, and there's no worries there of, of, okay. of Haldir falling. And after a couple minutes, you see this yeah. the, the first guy coming back uh, on, on his horse. And his demeanor has entirely changed now um, after the, the summons. Uh, he comes back with the summons and passes the summons back to each one of you guys. And <laughs> Eric's got a girlfriend. Passes the summons back to each one of you guys. And the thing is, like, that he now re recognizes that this is a, an official document and that you guys are being summoned by Melathon, which is one of the highest ranking people in Thandir. So he comes back and sort of bows respectfully and says, my apologies for meeting you with such force. And he comes over to each of you and says, some supplies for the rest of your journey. And he snaps his fingers, and uh, there's another horse riding with him who comes over. And he gives each of you guys 10 gold pieces, a total nice. of 50 arrows. I don't know if any of you have archery. Um, yep. Yeah, I do. I got 50 a bolt. arrows, 20 bolts if you guys have uh, crossbows. Yep, I do. And he gives, he, he gives each of you rations for three days. So you have three more days worth of rations. Any ale? And I'm sure there's a little bit of ale in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I'm gonna... then the scout guy, he looks at you and he says, he says, uh, God speed you in service of, of Thay and Deer. I'm going to ask him Thank if there's a sir. chance that we could uh, get a small escort. Uh, as the, in, including escort. Our, our escort. <laughs> if we can get a few more. Because, we need an uh, escort for our escort. <laughs> Damn it. Protection. Uh, no, protection. Uh, as, uh, Holy Christ, am I going to speak are... for you? You're supposed to be the lying, cheating, stealing guy. <laughs> That's the problem, dude. Don't make me the fucking... The charismatic... He looks at you and says, I'm, our, our, resources are, our resources are thin. Uh, but you are, you are only within a few hours' ride of, of, uh, of Middendorf. You should be able to have uh, smooth riding there. We, we didn't encounter anything on the road, so it's probably most likely going to be a fine journey for you. Okay. Hold on, guys. Uh, I need 30 seconds. Yep. Go for it. 
fucking shit. Yeah. Uh, so he turns right. around. He he turns around and um, starts to head back to the cavalry unit. Um, the the infantry guys walking down. Yeah. Before um, we leave, that guy that I charmed, I want to uh, remind him that he owes me two gold, and I he want I want him to pay up since <laughs> since we're here. Nice. Take a uh, take a deception check with advantage. So roll two d twenties. Take the highest. Add your um, deception bonus. So, so wait, sad. what guy did he steal gold? What? Who? The guy I charmed. Oh, you're just gonna try to steal from him? <laughs> He's and... gonna try and and nicely request the money back that he gave him. Oh, come on, Matt. Wait, you gave him money? Do we? It's a nineteen plus three, twenty-two. Oh, and he and he looks and says, ah, "Of course, uh, my friend." Uh, and he, he reaches in his pocket, pulls out two gold, flips it your way. Uh, and he turns around and rides off with the other scout who was uh, was riding in front of him, and the third guy as well who gave you your rations and supplies. And they head back to this uh, massive unit that's walking by. By now, this unit is getting pretty close to you guys, um, and you're in the middle of the road, and they're walking down the middle as well, um, shouting out orders uh, for you guys to move to the side, make way for the make way for for the army. Yeah, I'm I'm moving to the side. Yeah, I'll move yeah, to the gonna, side. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, gonna get out of the way and just kind of. And then also, Obviously. do we know? Do we know that Dan trick like charmed a guy? Are we? Uh, yeah, are we aware like, of that? Are we aware of that, or do we think that he actually? I'll say, knows? I'll say no. I'll say no. Actually, um, based on your perception there, um, I just rolled for Dan. Um, so no, he did it quite subtly. Um, mm-hmm. So he mumbled some words, and I, I, it's it's somatic. It's it's um, verbal as well, right? Yep. So he mumbled some words. He did a little hand gesture, um, and none of you guys caught that. So okay. y- you, once again, you're left with this impression that maybe Niv is a little more connected than you guys had initially yeah. thought. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of ride over to Niv and say, "You got a lot of friends in, in the area." Yeah, it pays to have a lot of friends. <laughs> All right. Well, my respect because I have no idea what he did. The kind of just went up for Niv a little bit. <laughs> So these soldiers Other start to walk by one by one, um, and you look in the infantry units, and you can behind the armor you can make out the faces of the soldiers, and they seem quite young. Some of them appear to be more like boys than men. Um, and you gaze across a few of them, you can see that there's in their eyes there's a sense of anticipation and nervousness that that there is something happening. There's some sort of military surge in the works, and these these young men are nervous. They're an- anticipating something. So in and, a moment of clarity, I'm going to say, guys, we got to ride. There's about to be a battle. Yeah. I, I think we should take off, like, immediately. All right. You turn your horses and start galloping. What gives well, you that idea? Uh, yeah. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm heading <laughs> no, out. I'm, I'm just trotting along. Yeah. I'll let him All go. Right. So Groggle's going to take off in the lead then, taking off um, at, at a pretty decent pace. I kill my horse by riding too Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am gonna, well, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna are yell sure after. Not, are we sure they're not donkeys? Don't don't kill your horse. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not gonna go any faster than. So the three of you stick back, and you're you're hanging back a little bit. Groggle, you take off with a new force. <laughs> go ahead and give me give me another athletics check because your horse oh, can't quite right. handle this instruction. Twenty five. All right. So of course, you as a master, you handle your horse and you take off and you head off, leading the charge. Uh, you guys are, are continuing to ride north on the path. Um, nothing else really eventful happens. The scouts are right. They pretty much cleared out the area of anybody who was there. Um, so there's nothing to worry about. You've got pretty, pretty easy, nice roads. Uh, you could have told me that 30 so, seconds ago before I killed my horse almost. <laughs> free will, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, free will. So you guys are riding along. Um, is there anything else you want to do before you hit, um, hit the edge of Mittendorf here? I want, as we're on the road, I want to kind of walk, I want to keep an eye out for any fireflies. Okay. Yeah. Right along the road, if I see any fireflies, I want to I want to catch some. Okay. It's yeah. still, and the sun hasn't quite set yet, so it's still a little okay. bit hard to see. But maybe in a couple hours, you might be able to see some fireflies. Um, but right now, it's pretty hard to see. Um, but I'll tell you what, go ahead and give me a perception check anyway. Okay. All of us? Uh, just just uh, bowling. Uh, nine. Nine, yeah. So you don't really see anything. It's it's too bright out. Um, the fireflies, if they were there, they're just not bright enough. So you don't see anything yet. Okay. So you guys begin to 
to ride uh, towards Mittendorf, and as the sun is beginning to, to move down towards the horizon, you crest the final hill marking the top of the river valley, and you catch your first glimpse of the Daylandar River. Now, this is the largest and most powerful river on the island that runs from the cold, fresh pools of the west before dividing into two. And one arm of it goes right through the middle of Thandir. The other arm branches south and goes through Mittendorf before depositing its raging waters into the sea off the eastern coast of Thalandir. Now, the water, you can tell, is, is unnavigable. It's a raging torrent as far as you can see. And you can see the glistening mists rising up into the watercolor sunset as gallon upon gallon of, of strikes against knife-like rocks that are stabbing their way out of the dark blue depths. And as you follow the contours of the riverbank, your eyes come to rest on the settlement of Middendorf. The settlement is built on a bridge, a massive bridge, standing upwards of 100 feet over the river below that arcs from bank to pillar to pillar to bank and leaving a single majestic arc in the middle, spanning the greater part of the Delanda. And even from this distance, uh, you're able to perceive the damage to the settlement and to the bridge that you'd heard about in, in the Crow's Crown back in Haldir. And in particular, you see a massive gaping hole on the eastern side of the bridge where the stone had been smashed from a great impact uh, long ago. And it's slowly beginning to weather uh, and, and to erode away because of all the harsh weather. And as you come in closer, you begin to pick up more signs of decay uh, in, in far more vivid detail. Thatch roofs with holes in them, missing tiles, plaster flaking off of walls, broken beams, stones and bricks having long ago begun to crumble from years of weathering and neglect. And on each side of the bridge stand two watchtowers holding up the wall and gate leading into the city that you must pass through in order to enter the settlement. And there, gentlemen, I will reveal to you, we have... <laughs> Mittendorf. Welcome to Mittendorf. And a remote. And a remote. Oh, yeah. Let's get the uh, that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> what is this weird plastic object? <laughs> are we coming from the east or the left? Lo the west? So you are coming, are coming from, from this direction from the south. So you're going to be heading this oh, way. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's basically two buildings? Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> Or is this that just is a representation? Your imagination. This is a represent, represent, representation. I didn't sorry, really Matt didn't have that. time to create yeah. the entire city. I'm sorry, I didn't have the time. There, in, in Mittendorf, if yeah. I can see here, there's probably about 40 to 50 buildings on the bridge. It, it's a bit bigger than when I got here, but this is the best I could do <laughs> with the time I had. Well, Jesus, our expectations are so high now. I feel, I feel like I'm from Back to the Future 3. Like, No, what is it? The first one, yeah. Uh, I must say, excuse me for the crudity of my model. <laughs> you remember when Emma oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, anyway. first one. So here you go, guys. Okay. You have Mittendorf. You begin riding up, and you see that immediately when you come up, there's a barricade in front of the gate, and there are two soldiers there uh, behind. And uh, one of the soldiers immediately yells out, Oi, where are you heading? And he steps out from around the corner of the tower, traversing his way through the rusty gates, marking the, the border of the bridge, with his hand held up in, in a stopping motion. And he says, there's a toll for passage across this bridge. If you don't fancy a swim, I, I suggest you best get a pay in. Uh, it's probably to Groggle. That... I mean, he would have made it there first, Yeah, right? he would have been there first. He would have been there. there way before us. I pull out my morning star and I say, we're on here on the orders of Mel, Mel. <laughs> Who's we? Yeah. You're all by yourself. Yeah, you're all by yourself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We're like a he mile looks around like, or something. <laughs> what do you mean, we? <laughs> I pull out my summons. Do we got our summons is back, right? You yeah. did get your summons back, yep. Okay. I yeah. pull it out and I show him. <laughs> okay, so he sees you pull out his morning star, and so he kind of like nods and looks to his other his other soldiers there, um, and they pull up the crossbow, so they're ready to fire at you. Um, and go ahead, actually, give me an intimidation check to see if, if you can actually um, do anything with this guy. How far are we behind him now at this point? Oh, you guys can see that he just came up, uh, so you're okay, you're so within within a visual distance. Okay, sixteen. Okay. So I mean that that's enough. He can tell that you're not a guy to be messed with. He can tell that you're serious. Uh, so he he beckons to you to come over with your summons. I show it to him. We're okay. here by order of um, whatever the dude's name is, Melifin. <laughs> you gotta really learn that if you're gonna use this. <laughs> if you're gonna use this trick. <laughs> what's what's his name? Melifin. Mel. <laughs> Uh, M -A -A -L -E. His name is Melathon. <laughs> I'm gonna yell from from down the, down the way. Black Bolin. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just had yeah, that I'm... image in my head. <laughs> so now that I see that uh, Goggle is uh, talking to the guards, I'm going to start writing a little harder to try to get there and... <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that things are not going to go well. Oh, yeah, these Trago, terrible, crappy horses! Yeah. Trago, give me another, give me another athletics check. Uh, oh with your god, crappy horse! When you pick it up once again, uh, this is tough, tough going here with these horses. Oh, it's going to be a ten. A ten. Okay. Um, let me see here. <laughs> You're barely That's, hanging on. <laughs> that actually is barely enough to hang on right now. Drag, um, drag you, behind you, the horse. You've actually gotten better because your horses are, are learning a bit. So they're actually getting better. So the difficulty class is going down, actually. So you just made it. You're fine. You get up to Groggle. Yeah. Groggle, you head up. You, you give him the summons. He, he pulls the summons out of your hand. He looks at it. Uh, and he, he's obviously not um, the same rank as the guy who received the summons in, in the cavalry unit that went by you. Uh, and he looks at it and he says... What what is this thing? I I just I asked him how much it is to pass. Well, he's, he looks. He says, "You got any go- you got any goods on you?" I say, "I'll give you a gold piece." Uh, a boy gold piece, nothing more than that. That's Otherwise, it. it's five crowns per person to get through here. Five. What? Am, I, am I am I with him right right now? Five gold pieces each. Sorry, that was I, I just gave you the Swedish yeah. currency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? <laughs> What's the conversion? Am, 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 I with, am I with him by now? Am I like privy to the conversation? <laughs> yeah, you're up with him now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And and uh, Bolin, Bolin and Niv are kind of like trotting along. Bolin, you're a little bit ahead of yeah. Niv. Niv, you're still kind of enjoying the flowers, uh, taking in the scenery. You're having a great time, actually. This is fun for you. You're 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 having the adventure of your life. Dan, Danny, are you high? <laughs> uh, apparently, I am. <laughs> uh, you I'm guys gonna... better hurry up. Because I'm just so I'm with them. I'm 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 wa- I'm walking up and I'm like we've been summoned by Malathon. Uh, we have business in Thandir. Uh, we're just passing through. If you'd let us go uh, as quickly as possible, we'll be out of your hair uh, by tomorrow. And he looks at you, and you realize you realize now that he couldn't read. <laughs> he couldn't read the summons. Oh. He didn't understand oh. the words. This is how stupid this guy is. So yeah. he looks at you. He hears the name Melathon. He says Melathon. Are you talking about Melathon and Thayan, dear? The very same. Oh, by, by all means. I mean, I mean, come in, come in, come in. But it's still going to be at least two gold from you. Uh, how much did we get from that guy? Yeah, I'll give him, I'll, I'll hand over the uh, eight gold. Eight gold, wow. So you're going to pay I'll, for I'll, hand, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for everybody. I'll pay for everybody. Because we got the gold from whatever. I feel like we just went into Valley Fair and Chad bought me a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Wee! And you take up with your horse and ride into through the gate. Uh, <laughs> I put my morning star away. Sing. <laughs> I hand it over. Angelic. I hand oh, it over to me. This is for me and my friends. Use it wisely. My friends and I. And he says, "Oh, I, I thank you for that. My friend, I thank you kindly for that." And he steps aside and says, "Welcome, welcome to Mittendorf. It ain't the prettiest <laughs> place you've ever seen, but it's at least some place." And he steps aside uh, and lets you walk through. Um, yep. What time is it right now? Is it getting kind of late? So it's the sun is is now starting to set. So it's starting to get okay. dark. Yeah. I'm gonna ask him uh, where he would suggest uh, where is a good place to spend the night, a good inn for the evening. He says, "Well, he looks at you and says, well, oh, there ain't too many here. Uh, on the other side of the bridge, there's a caravan that's just uh, that's just setting up camp over there. You can join them, uh, but they're not too friendly folks over there. We just let them through. Otherwise, there's a place here uh, called the Gilded Glory." And uh, if you want to camp, you can always camp, too, in one of the old ruins. This place is a kind of pile of junk here. But the Gilded Glory is just right down here on your left side. They always have places. There ain't nobody who's staying here. Okay. I'm going to thank him for his uh, knowledge, and then I'm going to kind of just wait for the other two of our party, Bolin and Niv. And Bolin and Niv, you eventually make your way up as well. Uh, and you meet up with these guys, and and there there is Trago waiting for you, um, and and you come up, and the guard has stepped aside. Trago, go ahead and explain what what you did for them. Yeah, uh, I got us passage through the town. You owe me a couple gold piece each, and we have <laughs> three that. options. We could camp, we could go uh, try to get in with the uh, caravan, or we could go to the gilded. Uh, what was it called? The gilded. Gilded glory. The gilded glory. I vote for the inn. Actually, I don't. I'm going to the inn. Yeah. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, I'd say the, the inn. The inn. 
Another. We're gonna have another. That works for me. All right. All right. All right so you, yeah. Yeah. you guys start. You guys yeah. start trotting through with your horses quite calmly, and as you move across the bridge, you're, you're forced to to stay to the to the western side to avoid the the, the gaping hole uh, that drops a hundred feet to the water below. Um, you notice that there's a few shops here. Um, some for food supplies. Um, there's a tailor. You can see there's on your left. You see the Gilded Glory. Um, it's a place you can probably get some drinks if you need to, some food. Um, propped up by the b- building there, you see it uh, looks like an old tired man. He's got a, a, a cart and he's selling some some things. It's hard to see what it is from here, a collection of junk. Um, and you, you see a bunch of other buildings on the other side that are quite abandoned. You can tell this place has been um, worn down and beat up. I don't know. You don't know if it's because of a war or because of uh, yeah, raiding. You can't tell if it's because of just neglect or. Yeah, it's hard to say, but it, it the, okay. the place is kind of it's kind of a a bit of a bit of a junky place. What's uh, the mood of the people? Are there people in, or is it pretty dead? You see nobody on the street except for the old man with the cart sitting there, kind of sitting by himself, like with his his, his walking stick, sort of tapping out a rhythm on the ground. Um, and other than the soldiers, that's that's the only person okay. you've seen here. It's pretty dead. Do I notice anything about uh, the guy, the one guy that's there? Take a perception check. Yeah. Roll a d20 for me. In the in the cart? Ooh, that's terrible. The guy terrible. sitting by the cart, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's not going to be good. So I f- I'll give <laughs> three. I'll give you advantage yeah. on that. Take advantage. Take advantage. I want to look at I, I want to look too, so just roll again. Okay. Yeah, right. How are you, you, get, take, how are you uh, advantage? Bolin will help he'll, right. he'll help you out there. Yeah. So seven, you, I mean, uh, we could roll twice if he yeah. he wanted to yeah. roll once and I could roll once or I could just give him advantage. Yeah. Oh, so seven rolls. So you can 17. help. Yep. Seventeen. Okay. Um, well, you notice the man is. Um, he's an older man. I mean, he's got a he's got a white patchy beard. Um, and and sort of his hair is almost formed like dreadlocks. Um, and you notice that, that as he's sitting there, he's he's making this strange clicking rhythm with his stick on the ground. You hear this, tick, 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 tick. Tick, tick, tick. And then he repeats that same rhythm um, as if he's a bit senile sitting here with this cart full of uh, what looks to be jars, random different shaped jars with some kind of liquids in it. It's hard to see from from how far away you are, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to go talk nothing, to him. Nothing too strange with them. Bull, I'm gonna go, I want to go walk. I'm going to walk up to him and strike up a conversation. One thing, Immediate, man, I wanna, sir. I, I want to ask you before we go any further. Like with the thieves can't, do I just notice stuff automatically or is it perception like that? Because I'm not really sure how that works. So with thieves can't, you're able to to read certain um, scripts that thieves use. Um, you're able to pick up certain yeah. kind of clues and things like that. When you speak with thieves can't, okay. you're able to speak normally, but you're is able it... to insert these kind of like uh, thieves um, uh, hints and so it's, clues. So it's more, it's more spoken... And not like sign languages, signs like on the wall that I would recognize. Or I, I think it can incorporate that as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It can incorporate that as well. I just, I yep. just, that's kind of what I was wondering. All right. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Yep. Right. So Bolin, you walk up um, to this man, and and like I said, he's got this long patchy uh, beard, dreadlocks, um, dark blue robe. It's got some stains running down on the side. You can tell he's been a rather, probably a rather poor man. Um, and as you come closer to him, uh, he kind of cocks his head to the side, uh, and he he listens to you, uh, to your 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 breathing, your footfalls. Um, and go ahead and, and and give your greeting again. I missed that. Sorry. Give my what? Your, your greeting again. You said something oh. to him, or? Oh, I said uh, I was just going to say good good evening, good sir. I'm very interested in your wares. What do you what do you uh, what are you partaking in this evening? Well, well, welcome to Mittendorf, he says, and he, he, he turns his head aside, and, and he opens his eyes to look at you, and you see that his eyes are entirely white. There's no pupils, there's no irises, and you can tell that, that the man is, is blind. He obviously can't see you. He's cocking his head to the side to hear you, and he says, well, my good man, welcome to Mittendorf. What can I help you with? I'm just... Inquiring about what you might be selling today, and I'm I'm gonna be walking these jars. up here, By the by the way, I'm gonna walk up with Bolin too. You okay? You come up with Bolin. Just well. to, like, he, to listen he hear, in. He hears you as well. I mean, he hears your footfalls. Um, as as a blind man, he's quite perceptive to to the sounds, and he says, "Ah, oh, yes, indeed, my friend. What? Who is it that is joining me? What is your name?" 
Hello, my name is Peter, and this is my colleague, Stefan. Hey, Peter, Stefan. Take a deception check. <laughs> Peter? Shit. Oh! Deception? Oh, boy. Uh, am, I, am I taking it 14. or is he? 14. <laughs> am I taking a, a deception? No, just, just Bolin okay, who said God. that. So the man kind of giggles <clears throat> himself a little bit. <laughs> oh, I've heard uh, all sorts of names, so I'm assuming you're... Your travelers who don't want to be known. We get many of those through Mittendorf. Welcome. I make no judgments on you, but I am here to sell things, as you can see. Peter? And for God. He obviously doesn't believe what? you, but yeah. <laughs> he doesn't what are, and what are And what are in these jars, good sir? Uh, my friend. What are you selling today? These are what I call Mittendorf merriment. They are the finest of the potions that you can find anywhere in Theander or Haldir, but in only a fraction of the price. What potions might you be including in this grand old display? <laughs> in this I'm grand looking old? very. Yeah. I'm looking how, very. How big, dis how big are, are they? Just sitting jars? on a table? Like or? are they big? jars or the jars so the jars are, are all random sizes i mean he basically has been collecting all sorts of different varied size glass bottles and jars some of them are round some of them are square some of them are large some of them are quite small little veils uh and um, um and he's got them all packed uh, randomly inside of his cart and there are different colors there's some blue ones some and red they ones they do have liquid in them though they're they do have li liquid in okay. them um and the man says well peter Peter, Peter, this is a great potion for you if you are ever hurt and in need of some replenishment. So you could say these were potions of healing, perhaps. Oh, perhaps, but I would rather call them Mittendorf Merriment. This guy's got a brand. Can't blame him. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick one up I'm... at random and just ask him what this one does and see what he says. What do you think it does, my friend? It's like, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Neither do I quite know. I see, I make these. I uh, used to be an expert in Thay India. I've, I've, I've slipped a little bit in previous years, but I've, I've been quite an expert, and I, I believe that all of these should be, uh, as you say, Peter, uh, potions of healings of some sort or another. And, uh, Trego, give me an investigation roll. Investigation? Didn't even know that was a thing. All right. Plus it's three. where we play the Law and Order song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nine, <laughs> nine. Not great. Nine. So uh, I mean, it's it's basically yeah. yeah. You, you see these potions? They yeah. they're exactly like he describes them. They're just a bunch of random liquids in random shaped okay. bottles. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him how much he wants for one. For one. Hmm. Well, these potions in Theodore would cost you upwards of fifty gold pieces, but I'm willing to part with one for ten gold piece a piece. <laughs> it's quite a discount, good <laughs> yeah. sir. Oh, indeed. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's highway robbery. Go. I offer him one gold piece for the jar that I'm holding. <laughs> one gold piece, my friend. The jar is worth more than one gold piece, my friend. I cannot part with them for one gold piece. It's it's can, already can I, such a reduced price. Can I tell if he's telling the truth? We're not going to go point. ahead and give me an investigation check. No, sorry, give me an insight check. Sorry, sorry, insight check. Dark, dark, dark. While these guys are talking to him, thirteen. Okay, I heard what you said. Yeah, go ahead, Niv. Uh, when these guys are talking to him, uh, can I? This, yeah, this is a cantrip. Can I use my minor illusion to make like fake noises off behind this guy or somewhere, Absolutely. and then try and steal one of the small mm. nice. vials? Uh, go ahead and, and do that and, and give me a, a sleight of hand check. Okay, I have a question. So I have that as one of my, the ones with the dots. So does that give me a proficiency bonus to it as well? It does, yeah. So, it, so the numbers that you have there should be with your proficiency bonus added. So you have a proficiency, proficiency of plus two. Right. So that should be added to... So it to... should be plus five total. Yes. Um, so go ahead and l let me know what's the noise you're going to make, the, the, the illusion, uh, the sound you're going to make behind him. Uh, I'm going to make it sound like there's some sort of big... Because we're right outside the inn, right? Yeah, we're right outside the inn. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. It's going to make it sound like there's some sort of huge fight clanging and people fighting and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You hear the okay. sound and he just for a second turns his head behind and you try to steal him. Go ahead and give me a sleight of hand. Bolin, uh, we'll come back to you in a second with your uh, insight 16 deck. plus 5, 21. Oh, 21. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, you just made it. So you're able to reach your hand out and grab the closest bottle there and, and sort of slip it into your pocket. He, he, he turns his head at this sound and, who oh, is such carousing here these days in Mitten Dorm? Uh, and he turns back <laughs> uh, and doesn't notice a thing. And Bolin, um, your insight check is, he seems like he's telling the truth uh, about, about his potions. Um, he seems to trust in his potions. Um, and I think his story about um, about working in Thandir seems to be credible. I mean, there's no you don't have any reason to suspect anything of him. Good sir, you sold me. I will take one of your fine Mittendorf merriments. Uh, indeed, indeed. Thank you, thank you. Gold. And he puts his hand out, he takes the ten gold, and he says, "My fine sir, you may have the honor of selecting whichever you would like." I'll take a blue one. All right. So you take a blue one. Go ahead also and give me uh, an investigation check, Bolin. Matt, I also want to – do I do I notice what Danny did, what Niv did? That's, co that's cocked. Really. With the – Give me a perception. Give me a perception ten. check, Drago. Ten. Oh. Investigation ten. check of ten. Okay. Uh, so also the same thing. It just looks like some, some normal liquids. Um, no, nothing strange, nothing unusual. Yeah. What do you have, Trago? That, that was a, a bad one. I got a negative one perception, so I need to get that fixed. So I got. So a you, you don't know that Niv do that. Niv was pretty oh, slick. Yeah. He just slid it right into his pocket. You also were um, sort of uh, – your, your your attention was caught by the sound, right, and you looked right. away as well, so you missed it as well. <laughs> you did. At, what the this, fuck? At this point, do I even know if <laughs> – what are you, Dan? Like, what Are you wizard? Yeah, I'm a wizard. Do I – do we even know – like I'm trying to think of last week. I don't we, think like, uh, I don't think Niv told you anything about his. Yeah, background. we don't know anything. I don't, about I don't think. Yeah, we just don't know. Like, so I'm assuming you're like, kind of like me. You're taking, you're stealing my thunder. All right. Okay. So Niv, Niv, and Bolin, go ahead and write in your inventory. Um, go ahead and write. Each of you has one bottle of the Mittendorf Merriment. <laughs> Who knows what yeah. it actually does. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? Well, it's any, if it's anything like the potions you buy on the internet, you're gonna have one hell of a sexy, sexy fun time. <laughs> and I'm I'm actually gonna take that that potion and toss it to Chad and say, mm. "Here's for getting us past the Mittendorf guy because he oh. said we owe him two gold." So I'll just give him that that potion that that ten gold potion. And fortunately, um, yeah, really, fortunately, this man is blind, gold. so he doesn't see you toss that. Otherwise, yeah. you'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna look at again. I'm gonna look at Danny and be like, "All right, you got my respect now." And, right. Uh, Trago, write that in your inventory. You've yeah. got one bottle of Mittendorf Merriment. So, uh, you guys want to join me at the hotel bar already? <laughs> yep. You I'll just come walk back right in, past yeah. this old man. So, yeah. So, walk into the inn, I guess. All right. You guys, yep. you guys head into the inn, into the Gilded Glory, um, and this place is is also a total dive. I mean, this is like your Motel Six in the middle of like Louisiana, right? It's it's sorry, anyone from Louisiana, um, but it's it, it's built. <laughs> it's built. You just, in the, you um, just neglected half of our half our water base. I spent a lot of time in Louisiana. Our watcher base. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Wait, anyway. Danny, didn't you kind of go to school? Go to school there yeah. in Tulane, yeah. 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 I actually another story for another time, but I actually I a friend and I actually carried a canoe through Tulane University uh, after we paddled the Mississippi River, but that's a different story. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, you, you walk into this place. It's it's built in the sort of the Tudor style, um, you know, the wooden beams that are filled with bricks, and there's a second floor that hangs out over the top. Um, and there's a there's a cracks all over the the footprint of the building, plasters flaking off, and the, the front door is is warped and twisted, so it's kind of lodged into the frame. So Groggle, when you go forward to enter your way in, go ahead and give me a strength test, actually. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, so you you just you just got it. So you crank that door open and. 
Ooh, lodge it, take it out of its frame, and you walk in, and there, standing behind uh, the counter, is is a uh, a woman, uh, a large boned woman. She's got thick curly brown hair. <laughs> a large boned woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to insult Louisiana, so I'm not going to keep going the insult here. Uh, she's wearing she's wearing a green apron um, with an odd <laughs> a, embroidered design on it. It looks like something like a wild swine or a pig, surrounded by some text in a language that you, you can't read. It's other than other than common. Um, and next to her is, is on the counter is a long uh, black pipe that's uh, drafting some some sweet fragrant tobacco. And and she looks up at you and says, uh, and when she sees you come in, and she looks up at you and says, uh, um, "Well, now uh, that door, I've been meaning to fix that one. Welcome to the Guild of Glory. <laughs> I want your finest room and a pint of ale. Well, my friend, we don't really have fine rooms here. We have." We have rooms, as you can see, but they're not in exactly in the best condition. But we do have rooms. How much? Um, do you have any mounts with you? Anything you're going to need in addition to uh, just yourself? Oh, yeah, we got to stable our horses. Shit. Ooh. The horse. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Eric, your horse is yeah. probably long gone. By... <laughs> yeah, it just, like, got off your horse. <laughs> we all kind of did, didn't we? Shit. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Your He's horses are still horses in town. I just, I just rolled for it. Your horses are still in town. Um, and as, as she's in saying town this, somewhere or no, like... they're still grazing around in the <laughs> area, the general away. area of, of the inn. <laughs> and as they're as they're doing this, uh, as you're, as you're talking, uh, Groggle to to this woman, uh, you hear this thud on the door as the three of you try to get into the door. Uh, who of you? Who, which one of you is going first? I'll go first. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Bowling. Give me a strength test. <laughs> Yeah, don't make me do a strength test. What? Nine. 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 So you you pull the door and it's stuck. It's lodged in the framework. Groggle slammed it shut even harder. It's even more lodged than before. And you, you give a I'll yank and knock, you pull. And I'll knock on the door. Pull. So you start knocking on the door. And Groggle, as you're talking to this woman, suddenly you, you hear this knock, loud knocking on the door behind you. And she turns around and you says, um, would you be so kind as to help me out here? Sure. So you go and push the door open. Give me another strength test. <laughs> Natural one. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> so you put your shoulder into the door and you nail your shoulder and you fall back and you're like, oh, and you're looking really sore. She walks I'm still knocking. Says, it's still knocking. She walks past you, kind of pushes you aside, uh, Groggle. She says, I could tell this one. I never trust a half orc. And she goes ahead and rolls, and boom! She slams the door open so. and smacks you in the face, Bolin, as you're standing behind the door. Um, and you're actually gonna <laughs> gonna go ahead and take uh, hey, take Joanna. one point one point of bludgeoning damage as you get catch the door in your face. You go flying backwards, and there are Trago <laughs> and Niv standing there as you're laying on the ground. And the woman uh, opens the door and says, "Well, come on in now. Is there anything I can help you with?" And she are steps sure aside. She, are you sure she's yeah. not in Louisiana? <laughs> I be. And, uh, did you say she's a human? Um, it's tough to see. She looks like she she could be a human. She has some human human features. Uh, go ahead and take an investigation check if you want. Okay. She could be human. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Um. Yeah. She looks human. There might be a little bit of gnomish um in her. Some gnomish features. Uh, that might be somewhere in her family line, but yeah, I mean, she looks she looks human, but yeah, some gnomish features. She walks back in behind the counter uh, and back to Groggle, and she says, uh, "Excuse me, honey, I wasn't quite ready, but now I'm ready." Okay, what so how many saying? how many how many silver pieces many? per gold? Oh, that's a good question. Is it ten? I think it's ten. Yeah, uh, help me out, you guys. Yeah. Know yeah. I we just do the metric. Yeah, Let's just do the metric. It is. So I'm yes. gonna. Is Bolin basically ass over tea kettle? He's on his back here, or Bolin's so got. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like skirt around him <laughs> and uh, kind of look down with uh, you know a pitying look and smile at the uh, lady <laughs> as she goes in, and it's like I think we all need a drink and well, just kind of follow her in. Come on in now. Is there anything else I can get you? Are you uh, the this uh, this tall, uh, somewhat weak green man over here was talking about maybe getting a room? Is there something I can interest y'all in? Uh, I'm gonna ask her. How do do we want all separate rooms? Yes. Uh, are you sure? I'm going to go. Yeah. I, no, I don't need. Uh, I don't need a room. 
I don't need a room. You don't need a, you don't need a room? I'm going to kind of look at you guys, kind of put my head over my shoulder, look be at, behind me, and see what you guys want to do. How much is the line here, Bob? Do we know? What's that? Did she say how much the rooms are? Not yet. No. Oh. no. How much are the rooms, I ask? Well, um, I'm willing to, we're willing to go with the, the normal rate here. Um, I can give you a room, a single room, uh, and that will include food, bedding, and water for your, uh, your horses uh, for two gold a night. Holy crap. That... I'm going to say, well, my good friend Drago here <laughs> owes me two gold, so I will take a room on him. And I'm going to kind of like, well, I can't pat his shoulder. I'm going to kind of like elbow into pat him. Elbow him his his kneecap. His yeah. kneecap. I'm so she uh, <laughs> she looks at your track and she says, all right then, honey. Uh, we've got three standards here. We've got low quality, lower quality, and lowest quality. Which one of those would you like? <laughs> Shit, shitty, or shittiest. Uh, well, if we're paying two gold for all three of them, I'm going to take the highest quality I can. Okay, so she get, she um, goes and digs around and pulls out a, a set of keys and gives you a set of keys. Uh, and she says... Uh, 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 if I'm paying, we're all in the same room. Uh-huh. Gross. You, all, all, all three of you want, want to be in a single room. There's only one bed in each room, you know. I'm, I'm going to look up at Grog and be like, dude, you owe me two gold. I don't care. <laughs> so then can you pay me the two gold so I can get my own room? Mm, uh, I relent. I want my own room. Okay, honey. So I'm going to say I keys. don't trust these guys, and I want my own room, too. All right, so she pulls out two other sets of keys. Unfortunately, Grogu, you get the, the lower quality, and Niv, you get the lowest quality um, the room. Uh, but, you know, there's really not that much of a difference. This place is a total dive anyway. So she hands you the keys, mm -hmm. um, and she says, All right, gentlemen, just, just to, my, to, my, to my left here. Up the stairs, you have your room. To the right here, we have a place where you can get some refreshments. Um, we have some, some, uh, some bread there, and we have uh, uh, some jugs with some, some drinks, if you'd like that. Go ahead and help yourselves. Just tell me later what you use. I'll go out and uh, gather your horses and, and, and put them in the stables for the night. Uh, how, how many horses do we have out here? Uh, aren't you going to ask me for my rewards number and if I want a bottle of water or a cookie? Honey, this <laughs> is Mittendorf. There ain't no such thing as rewards. <laughs> I'm going to... Wait, you're, what did you say? Okay, Eric distracted be... <laughs> me. What, can you repeat what you just said? Damn it. Uh, there, there's, there's bread and there's drinks <laughs> yeah. in, in there. You can go get something if you want, honey, and, and drink whatever. Just tell me what you took later and I'll just write it down. Oh, and I'm uh, is, there, is there anyone yeah, else? Yeah, is oh, is yeah. there anyone else in this That's place? That's a good point, too. Um, you look to the left. Go ahead and take a take an investigation check as well, Niv. Uh, okay. Six. Six. Um, <laughs> it's pretty there dark in there. Walls, you don't, you don't really see anything. It's, it's pretty dark in there. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of lighting. They have candles on each of the tables that are kind of running low. Um, so you you can't really tell. Um. So, but she she turns and, and she says, "How how many horses am I am I going to be bedding down for the night here?" Uh, four. Okay, but you, right. you no. Only, uh, wait, no. We had we, get a, we got a fifth from the yeah. We got a fifth from the uh, uh, guard. Did we get a fifth from the guard? Did he give Did he give us a horse? Did he give us a horse? Or no, did he, he just give us? Horse. Uh, he did. Oh, he just gave us the supplies. No, he he may have given okay. you horse meat in the rations, but he didn't give you a horse. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. four. Now, if Tim's not going to get a room we're gonna have to pay more now all right honey well, well one more gold piece for that extra horse then i'm gonna look at uh danny and uh, well i'm gonna look at bolin is he awake now uh bolin yeah he's he's come back he's, and he's, he's back uh, i'm gonna look at bolin and be like if you don't want a room man you gotta pay for your own horse i'm not gonna say anything right. just i'll at give him. yeah i'll just flip him a gold coin and walk out and walk out the door okay okay take another strength check <laughs> 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 this freaking door <laughs> 18. 18. All right, so you put your shoulder in and just boof, boof, <laughs> slam the door open and the, 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 um, the woman comes behind you um, and she's walking behind you and she heads over and starts collecting your horses and she leads them into the stable, which is right next to the inn there, uh, and starts to bed them down for the night. And um, so, Bolin, you're out in the street now. The rest of the three of you are still behind the counter in the inn. Uh, I'm going to kind of look at Bolin, try to get his eye and, like, indicate, like, maybe keep an eye on her. 
Oh, Bolin. Okay, as he's leaving. Yeah. Yeah, like as, as he's what, like if I don't whatever he looks back and I want, I'm just kind of like, eh, give him. Maybe let's not trust her as much as we think we should. And I'm gonna grab like my essentials shit off the horse, obviously. Okay. Yep. yep. But I want someone to keep an eye on her. Okay. Oh so yeah. Uh, I don't. Do I don't notice him at all. <laughs> you don't notice. Just, I watch out the. I walk out the door. I'm not right. looking back. Okay. Yeah. Do we? Yeah. Do we? I'm gonna if if it's attached to my horse, I'm gonna take my my stuff off. I don't. Okay. Know. You take your saddlebags with all of your your stuff yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 So you guys head back out again. Um, we'll assume you follow her so the door is still open. You can slide out. Grab your saddlebags. Yeah. You take your stuff back into the inn. Um, she starts to lead them into the stables and starts to get them food and water and, and, and hay and bed them down for the night. Now the sun is now has gone down below the horizon, so it's now starting to get dark in Mittendorf. Okay. Uh, I am going to just – I'm going to walk uh, on the side of the bridge. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit down and just stare off into the horizon and go into trance. Okay. So Bolin goes med- off. And just meditate. Sort of a, yeah, a, a meditative trance. Um, and, uh, you, Is that you, an elf thing? Yeah, so elves. Yes, yeah. So elves, the, actually, yeah, the, interesting yeah. enough, the official ruling on this was is that elves, they, they can do a meditation, they can do a trance for four hours, and that gives them eight hours worth of sleep. But... Yeah. You still need to lay low for the other four hours. You don't need to sleep, but you need to do very minimal activity. So it's still an eight-hour period. Like play uh, Dungeons and Dragons? But it's only four hours that you're actually in your trance. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, so Bolin, okay. Bolin go finds a little place in the corner, sits down, and starts to fall into a meditative trance. Uh, four hours only. And you three are left there uh, inside of the, uh, of the inn down by the counter. What would you like to I'm, do? I'm, I'm going to my room and going to sleep. Head up to your room. Okay. Is there is there a fireplace? There is a fireplace. Yeah, there's a fireplace with a with a small fire in it. Uh, okay. So Groggle, you uh, head up to your room um, and you bring your key up and you open your your door, head in. You, you start getting ready for the night. Niv, Trago, you're left down in the bottom there. I'm gonna. Is there? I'm gonna go grab some some of the the charcoal and ash and stuff out of the fireplace. Mm-hmm. Can I do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you walk over. Uh, I need materials for one of my spells that I yeah, don't have. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to put myself back into my room, check the windows, like, uh, what what's, like, the security in the room? Is it, I mean, like, a window and a door, or is it... It's pretty... it's not very good. I mean, it's you have one one door coming in. You have you have a one window going out. The window is is a one a single pane. It's not very secure. But you're up okay. on the second floor now, so that's going to protect you from, uh, right. from ground so level. So I'm... Burglar, I'm yeah, gonna put my stuff away, but I'm gonna organize it like in a certain way so I know if anybody touches it mm. that, that I can recognize it, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and go down to the common. Okay, so you head back down, and you're you meet yeah. Niv there when he's uh, digging around in the in the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it how 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 late is it? Is there any like shops or stalls or anything open? Oh, Are there, there any even be, in the I mean, town? There might be, but it's getting into seven, eight o'clock at night, so it's getting getting pretty late. I'm assuming there's not a whole lot. There wasn't much. There wasn't much around when you came into Mittendorf, uh, but now it's getting pretty late. Um, okay. And as Niv, as you're digging around um, in the fireplace, you hear a uh, you hear a voice uh, from the corner of the room say, "Well, that's quite the interesting thing you're doing there." Uh do I do look around and can I see anyone? You said it was dark in here. Yeah, you look around and and, and now you see you're a little bit closer. There's a dark. There's a figure with, with his back to you, uh, looking over his shoulder, uh, wearing a hood. Um, he looks over you and, and and sees you catch catch his eyes and he says, "What are you doing here?" I'm just here to get a restful night's sleep. Mm. My lowest quality room. <laughs> in your your minus star room <laughs> you're in the minus three stars <laughs> uh but he says uh, oh, that's that's quite an interesting thing you're doing there with taking uh taking ash out of the fireplace that's not a normal behavior for somebody who's staying in a room uh <laughs> Do I, uh, is this, I mean, like, is he, is he a threatening, 
person or is he drunk? Give me another investigation check. I gotta look that up again. Wait a minute. It's plus four. Oh. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, well, you can see he doesn't seem to be inebriated. He's he's sitting there at the table. He's got a book open next to him. Uh, in his left hand, you see he's got this strange, um, almost like a, a small flame from a candle that's dancing on the palm of his hand. He's holding his hand out, and, th- and there's a flame dancing there. Uh, and you, Niv, as a wizard, immediately recognize that there's some sort of interesting can trip he's doing here. And you look next to him, and on the ground, he's got uh, a suit of leather armor, and he's got a sword uh, in a sheath sitting next to it. Uh, and he's sitting there with his book, uh, and he looks like he's in perfectly normal condition. It's Tom Bombadil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell him that uh, someone who can do that, referring to the, the flame in his hand, isn't usually seen with that. And I point to the leather armor, mm. the sword, mm. and say, you know, looks like we're both kind of oddballs. Mm. And am, am I privy to this? Am I, <laughs> at this point, am I down? You're, you're standing pretty room? close. Yeah, you're standing right next to Niv when you, right. you're hearing all of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he looks at you, Niv, and he says, he says, ah, well, I figured just as much that you was also a, a magic caster based upon your uh, collection of supplies here. There, there ain't many people who digging around in coals. <laughs> it's just my hobby, <laughs> digging through old fires. Um. <laughs> But you're right, he says. Uh, it ain't common for someone to be, uh, yeah, both uh, soldier and magic interested. Uh, but uh, for me, it's also something of a bit of a hobby for now. But I want it to be more, of course. But that's not happening right now. Oh. I just kind of nod at him. <laughs> And start making my way towards towards my room. Can, can I hear this conversation confused. then? Yeah. So Niv, Niv, you turn around and take off, and he says, "Well, good night to you too, and good luck with your." <laughs> can I make like an insight check and try to figure out what this guy's trying to say? Um. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Just shoot me an insight sh- insight check, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you can sense anything special about uh, it. Ah, fourteen. Nothing great. <laughs> Not really. I mean, yeah. he seems like he's a soldier who's interested okay. in magic. <laughs> That's about it. All right. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go and uh, order a pint of their highest grade, not the finest, but the highest (laughs) grade ale that they have. So, so you walk back to the to the the bar, and the woman, she's the only one running this whole place, and she's out taking care of your horses right now. She told you to go ahead and help yourself. You look, yeah, okay. You look behind the bar, and there's just a a row of six or seven different jugs, uh, large jugs that have this sort of. Uh, breckish uh, liquor, it looks like inside of them. I don't think they have ale. They have looks like to be hard, hard alcohol, and it. I'm not sure it's going to be very good, okay. but you can try. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, <clears throat> the halfling version of Eeny Meeny Miny Mo and just grab <laughs> one and pour a drink. <laughs> All right, you grab a you grab a glass that's up up on the uh, on the counter there, and you. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You grab this one, pour it out, and there's this greenish liquid. Uh, it has the smell of of, uh, of salt and, and seawater and uh, seaweed. Um, maybe not that much different from Lefroig, in fact. Uh, and uh, it looks drinkable, um, but um, here it is. Bottoms up. Bottoms I'm going to take a sip of it and see what All happens. Right. Go ahead. Give me a constitution check. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's gonna kick my it's ass. It's gonna kill him. <sighs> Natty won. But I have luck. I have luck. You I'm lucky. Dead. When rolling a one on attack ability or saving, may roll and must take the second roll. Can I do that? Is that. You, you can do that, right? Is that a check? <laughs> Is that it's only. A, that's only. Um, you get that one time between a long rest. Is that right? Uh, oh, well, I don't. I didn't read the actual book, but on my sheet it says lucky. When rolling a one on attack, ability, or saving, may roll, re-roll, and must take the second roll. All right, we can let's let's use your luck and, and we can check later if that's between long rest, but you're gonna okay, sleep yeah. up soon anyway. Yeah. Go ahead oh, and re-roll that. Or please give me 
Natty 20. <laughs> I'll, no I'll even, like, I'll leave, yeah, like, literally, like, I'll even take a picture of it. So you, like a pro, just knock this thing Jesus back, Christ. slam your glass down, and you're feeling good. I mean, it's burning all the way down. You can tell this is some <laughs> intense stuff. I mean, you're not talking about any, any ale. I mean, this is stuff you don't want to mess with, but you, you handle it like a pro. <laughs> You're, so of you're my 37 good. pounds, I probably don't want to have any more. Yeah, that's uh, your call. Okay. It's up to you. Um, <laughs> wait, I hate to keep doing this, but I want to look around the room and see if there's any, or is can I figure out a, like a different way to get in and out of the building aside from the front door? Uh, give, me no another, open give me another investigation check. <sighs> Fuck, terrible. Uh, investigation... Hey guys, can we take well, five minutes here for a pee break and stuff? Sure. Let's um oh. let's do this. Uh, we'll, well, we'll wrap, we want we'll to just, uh, just me and you. Wrap this arc up. We'll just say um uh, you, you notice that um some of the windows they might be able to let you out um but uh, it, you you can't really tell. I mean, it, it looks like it's the front door that is is the is the only way in and out. Um, so yeah. are we doing a lot? Is this a long or short rest? So are you going to head up and head to sleep? Uh, Niv, you're already up in your room. Trago, you're going to head up to your room as well. Is that right? If I can't get in or out of the building easily, then probably. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to do a little invest investigation, but that might, you know. So you guys head up to your bedroom, and uh, we're going to get ready for a, a, uh, a night of sleep. Um, let's go ahead and take a break, but... I would like Bolin to stick around with me while the rest of you take your break. So, or is this a long or a short rest? Uh, if you're gonna, if you make it eight hours, it'll be a long rest. Okay. So go ahead, everyone else, right. and give uh, Bolin yeah. and I a couple minutes here. <clears throat> so, Bolin, as you. Creep into your corner outside of the inn and prepare for your night of sleep. You feel a rest coming upon you, uh, unlike any of you experienced in a long time. Kind of similar to what you experienced on the ship when you came over from Haraldheim. Uh, but it almost feels like a blanket is lowering down upon you and softly covering the sort of searing restlessness of your soul. And you feel your muscles beginning to loosen and your mind slowly empties of all impressions and thoughts. And it's total stillness, utter darkness, and the absence of all being. Fish! <laughs> You're jolted awake by a wave of icy cold water striking your face. You snap open your eyes and look around frantically, and you are lying on a dark, cold stone platform just above the waterline of the river, with your head protruding out over the waves. And occasionally, uh, when, when the water strikes a rock, you get a jettison of water onto your face. You jump to your feet, and you look down where you pushed yourself up. Onto your, up onto your feet and you see your own handprints on the stone in a dark crimson red. You lift your hands in front of your face and you see still wet blood covering them, slowly pooling at the base of your palms and running down your wrists. You drop your eyes to your cloak and you see a large blood stain around your right knee and your foot. And your eyes continue to the right where a pool of blood reflects the dim moonlight. And from the pool, you trace a bloody track where something has been dragged across the stone and dumped into the raging water. What do you want to do? I'm going to s slowly kneel down investigate and see what it is give me an investigation check <laughs> 19 19 so you can tell that the the pool is definitely blood it's not your own uh, and the, you can tell that there's a dragging mark something large was dragged over to the edge of the river and dropped in I'm gonna follow the follow the trail of blood it leads right to the edge of the platform, and you can see that the, 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 the blood is pooling on the edge of the platform, and it's dripping down the side of the platform into the water, the raging torrent of the river, and it's washed away downstream.
I'm going to walk into the water. Slowly walk into the water and go underneath. And see if I can see anything. Give me a strength a check. Give me a strength check. <laughs> Six. Six. Oh, no. So <laughs> as you step into the water, uh, you're immediately uh, swept by the by the waves. It, it's, a, it's a really strong current, a lot stronger than you had thought. And you are dragged now out into the river. And you begin to to, to, to stream down this, this raging river. Uh, and you feel rocks that are bouncing against your arms and your and your, your, your head. And, and uh, as you come closer and closer and closer uh, to the edge of, of, of the uh, the platform of the, the archway uh, that where, where the river is, you suddenly smack your head against the stone and everything goes black. And we'll take a little pee break there, us too. <laughs> oh. Should. Well, yep. let's um, let's let's go ahead and, and start up again. You guys, all right? You guys ready to go? Yep. Don't yeah, like... wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I didn't get a chance. I didn't see what they handed over. So Niv, you saw them. They were passing some paper, but I mean, you were too far away. It was hard to see that they were giving a summons. So <coughs> you really don't have any sense of 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 what that <coughs> what it looks like yet at this point. So as you as you guys go off to sleep, um. I'm gonna go. Hold, let me roll something here real quick. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> Groggle and Niv. You are suddenly awoken from your sleep by a flash of bright light from outside of your window. There, there was a flash that happened outside of your window. Tim, um, take your earbuds off. Down in the street. Wait, can I? Can I listen to this or no? Uh, you can, yeah, I guess it, it okay. doesn't matter. I mean, so Chad can listen to it then. Yeah, Chad can listen if he wants. Yo. He doesn't want to. No, he doesn't want to. That's fine. That's fine. You can. Um, so you guys are suddenly awoken. Um, you can Chad, listen to this if you, you want. You can listen well, to this can, if okay. you want, but, uh, yeah, it, you, you don't obviously experience this, and, and uh, Bolin, you don't either, but you can still okay. listen if you guys want. Uh, so there's a flash outside your window down on the street, and both of you are suddenly jolted awake from your sleep, uh, and and is there any kind of noise or anything or just the no it was just light. a strange flash with no sound just a, a bright light okay i look at I look outside uh, go it, ahead and give give me Grago, give me a perception check yeah cuz can we even see that side of the building uh, so your window uh, faces out onto the street, the middle there, the bridge part leading over. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to jump up and look, too. Oh, that was a natural one. Uh, okay. Uh, so both of you, simultaneously, you see this You see this small glowing light, um, and you see it begin to move down the street. And out of the corner of your eye, you catch a glimpse of a, a dark hooded cloaked figure following that light. And you which, see it which move. Which direction is it going? It's it's heading northwards, towards the northern gate. Uh, so and I then it, the it, it moves out of your out of your uh, out of your range of, of perception. Before it does that, I yell, "Hey, you there!" Are you opening your window to do it? Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you open up your window. Hey, hey you there! Um, yeah, make a strength <laughs> check. Um, nothing happens. Um, the figure keeps following this light, and eventually they move out of your field of perception. I go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Okay, Niv. I'm I'm gonna come down into the the main area there. See if anyone else is awake. If anyone else uh, saw or heard anything. Yeah, there's nobody else down there. Uh, everyone else is gone. The guy who was seen there um, with his own working his cantrips, he's gone as well. So there's nobody down there. Okay. I'm gonna go out. Through the, oh, I then have to try and open that fucking door, don't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try and go out through the door. All right, give me a strength check. It's still lodged. It's gonna be interesting. Four. Four. So yes, you're not your going anywhere. <laughs> you, you nail your shoulder to the door. The door frame does not open, and um, the figure with the light has passed out of your field of view, uh, and that person is That's gone. That's hilarious. 
<laughs> That's so funny. Uh, you're just going to go up back to bed then. All right, you head back to bed. And you head he into can't your get room. the door open, so he <laughs> gives up and goes to bed. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> so you guys are, uh, you get about five hours worth of sleep in. Uh, and after a few hours of sleep, well, f- five hours in, um, suddenly you are abruptly awoken by the deep sound of a horn. <laughs> And you hear shouting and the rustling of metal as soldiers in armor rush past the Gilded Glory in what seems to be random directions. Some of them seem to be heading north to the gate. Some are heading south. Some are moving back and forth. Um, and others uh, are, are, are seem to be stationing down in front of the Gilded Glory. And, and you look around you, uh, and, and suddenly you see the flickering of flames out of your window from across the bridge. Uh, and you see that the roof of the building across from you is on fire. And suddenly you now begin to smell the suffocating smell of burning pitch and straw as you begin to suddenly realize that your own rooms, your own building is now on fire, confirming your worst fears. Okay, so before we go further, that's a short rest then? Do we gain any hit points back? That's a short rest. You do not gain all your spells. You do not gain all your uh, full. But I do. But, um, yeah, bowl and will. Um, you said five but, hours, right? Yep, exactly, five hours. But you guys can take, since it was a short rest, you can take some of your hit dice if you want. Okay. So how do, I've how only got one work? left. Uh, you roll, roll whatever your hit die is and then... And add your stuff. constitution modifier. You can use as many oh, of your hit con- dice as you have. Most of you have um, two at this point okay, because... So, uh, yeah. All right. But I used one last time. Cool. You used one last time, so you're down to one. I'm gonna is there anybody? Uh, is there anybody attacking from outside, or is there anything? What's going on in the outside? I mean, I'm outside, so what's going on outside? Uh, Bolin, you are. Uh, you're not even on the bridge anymore. <laughs> oh, that like really happened. That really happened. Uh oh. Oh shit! <laughs> I thought that was a dream. No, that really happened. <laughs> Oh shit! You're not even on the bridge anymore. Okay. Uh... So are we? We're we're still in our rooms. I'm grabbing all my possessions and heading towards the door. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So am I. Are, are in your our rooms. rooms. You grab your how possessions. How bad is the fire? Like how bad do we have time to grab our shit? Uh, I mean, grab grab. Uh, roll an investigation check here, all of you. Um, all all three of you. Mm, Tim's like, oh no, I'm swimming again. Here's my second natural one. Second natural one. Fourteen. Five. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another lot six. No. Another natural one. No. (laughs) Chad suffocates in his Chad Chad is that dog (laughs) sitting in the room on fire saying everything is fine. I am the team right right now. Groggle, you 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 don't really know. Uh, I mean, it's hard for you to tell. Niv, you can tell though, Niv, that this building is seriously uh, on fire and it is burning. Now, Trago, you had such a massive failure. Um, your <laughs> mind, Trago, this is really important. Suddenly, your mind, Trago, flashes to visions of flames overwhelming a tiny house, and you hear in your mind screams from within that tiny house. Give me a constitution save now. Go ahead and roll a constitution save. Please don't be three in a row. <sighs> Fuck. Five. What's my con? Oh, <laughs> Six. Trago. Oh. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Trago, um, you <laughs> collapse onto the floor from this trauma that has sort of suddenly caught you, and you pass out. And you are unconscious for one minute. Shit. But this building is burning. That's super bad for you guys. So you are unconscious for one minute. Right. Uh, Groggle, you head this out of your, is not being bearing, used anymore. your stuff. Niv, you come running out now knowing that this is a really massive fire. And you head out. The two of you meet in the hallway and you see each other. And I, I yell at Eric, this is a big fucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> I say, really? <laughs> I, so I go check. I go. Uh, do I know where Chad's room is? Uh, yeah, it's right next hey, to you. Hey, play yeah. your character. You don't need to check on me. If I die, I die. No, I am playing my character. Yeah, uh, what do you say? What do you say? I Drug. kick the door. I kick the door open. You, so you're like, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, no, no, no. I ask. Uh, I, I, 
knock on the door and I yell, Trago, Trago. No response. And I, I've run down to the front door already. Okay, so Nib, you start already. heading down the down the down the round the corridor, heading down the stairs, and now you see that the flames are crawling up the stairs. You know it's possible for you to try and run down the stairs, but you might take too much damage. Uh, so either you try that and you kill yourself, or you have to find another way down the stairs because those stairs are totally engulfed in flames at this point. I'm gonna run back to my room. Uh, and look out the window. Is there like a hay cart or something I can jump into through the window? <laughs> take, uh, take an investigation check. Assassin Creed style. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen. Uh, you look down. There's nothing there. But you're only <laughs> you're only two stories up. You're two stories <laughs> up. It's just stone below you, uh, out your window. Oh jeez. Uh, there's nothing there to help me. Um. I'm going to run back to uh, where Eric is so you uh, head back to Grogo. and ask him how we're going to get out of here. Tell him that the stairs are on fire and it's a two-story drop to solid stone. Out I'm the kicking wind. the door open. All right, give me a strength test. 15. Okay, so no problem. You you push the door open, you kick it, and it swings open, and there lying on the floor is Trago passed out right next to his bed. Okay, I pick up Trago. I open the window or I kick the window and whatever I got to do and I yeah. throw Traeger out the window and I follow. <laughs> so you throw Traeger out I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab all of Chad's stuff and throw it out the window right after him. Well, yeah, I have all my stuff. You remember I no, said Chad's, that. No, right? Chad's Chad's stuff. You have all your stuff. Yep. I grabbed all my stuff though. So fortuitously, Trego, you only take this, <laughs> this is miraculously one point of bludgeoning damage. Okay. You somehow, oh because you're unconscious, you land, you kind of flop and hit the ground, yeah. and, and you're actually pretty good. Uh, so you, you bounce a little bit, and you're fine. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> behind you, you're still passed out, though. Yeah. Behind you the comes, problem. comes all of your stuff that sort of falls next to you. And, and, then here, and here the you, boulder that is... <laughs> Suddenly, Grago comes also behind you. Grago, go ahead and take a dexterity a save. Dexterity. Twelve. Twelve. Okay, so you're able to um, take uh, avert some of the damage. You also take one point of damage. Um, and give me also one more. Um, give me an uh, acrobatics test to see if you land on Trago or not. <laughs> <laughs> Squishing. Natural one, please. Natural one. Oh, fuck no, dude. <laughs> uh, acrobatics is 13. 13, okay. So you are able to uh, to move to the side, and you are able to jump past Trago. You land next to him. You suffer a little bit of bludgeoning damage from the fall, but otherwise, you're yeah, okay. okay. Uh, and you have your stuff. Trago's next to you. Um, the building, as you turn around and look behind you, is the flames are flying off of the top of the roof and also in the entryway to the building. Someone had kicked in the door and thrown some fire in there, hence so, fire heading up the stairs as well. I, I, I say, I, I, where's Fireman? I'm going to jump out the Jim. window and try and land on Eric. All right, so you're going to head out the same window. <laughs> give me, a, give me a, first of all, an acrobatics <laughs> check to see if you can land on on. Dan, the, your, your video is, is frozen to me. Not, oh, not for us. No, no yeah, you're good. Okay. I'm good. For me. Okay, never mind. Give me an acrobatics uh, check. Seven. Seven. Okay, so you, Miss Groggle, give me a dexterity, too. Uh, that's a d20 again? Yep. Uh, that one is 18. 18. Uh, oh, ouch. Uh, well, that's going to be okay, but you're going to take half damage there. Um, you, you take two points of bludgeoning damage from the fall. That's a pretty harsh fall for you. You land on your side, smash your elbow. Uh, you look up and your elbow immediately starts to swell up. Uh, you're, you're, that was a pretty hard fall. But now the three of you are there um, just below the building. Trago is unconscious. The building is starting to really burst into flames now. Uh, and the three of you are there in the street. Okay. I picked Chad up and we run to some place where there's not fire. Okay, so you, you head down a little bit, uh, a little bit more maybe this direction towards, uh, uh, or which, which direction you want to go? Towards the, uh, yeah, towards the dock. You guys are over here. You want to head yeah, over so this direction? Yeah. Well, because across came, the bridge we, is we on fire. We came from the too, left, right? yeah, so, so we you need guys, to go to the right. You guys are over here uh, in this building right here. All right, yeah, Chad's right. Let's go to the right. And across the bridge from us is on fire also, right? Yeah, across the bridge yeah. is on fire as well. So how, how much 
is it just those two buildings or what what all is on fire so yeah i mean the limited given the little limited nature of the model um you you see and um of those 40 buildings um there's at least uh, i mean give me an, actually give me a, a perception check there real quick Uh, 18. 18, okay, yeah. So you can see that, that probably uh, almost half the buildings are on fire. This is some some major uh, some major arson that's been going on here. Well, the, arson, you don't where know, are the but, horses? Uh, the horses are back in the stables. Is the stables on fire? The stables on fire as well. <laughs> no. That's what happens when you, your smart guy is fucking unconscious. I, I run that way. Okay, so you're gonna take this direction towards the stables. I'm, I'm I don't care about the stables. No, okay. I'm, run, I'm running. Uh, I'm pointing at my screen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm running on the ma on the model. I'm running to the, we'll say right. So you're gonna head out down um, this way. Correct. Yeah. Keep, away, yep, yep, keep going. Away from all the, we, the burning. We buildings. came from the left, right? Yeah. So you guys were here. Uh, and you yeah. you moved out, and then you're you're heading this direction. But we came from the other side when we came into town. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. north is to the yeah. right. Yeah. So this is north is this direction over yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the way I want to run. I so just you're gonna head run. north. Okay. Um, as you as you head north. Um, with, I got I got uh, dingle nuts in my arms. You got trails. Yeah. And I'm gonna follow him yep. with all the packs behind him. Okay, so as you as you guys head this way, Trego, you uh, begin slowly to regain consciousness, and as you wake up, you're sort of flopping around because you're on the shoulders <laughs> of Grogil, uh, and, and and there's fire all around you, um, and 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 you certainly come awake, and you're rather confused. All right, uh, I'm gonna ask what the hell is going on. I drop him. Then I just yell out While again. While you're running, big fucking fire. <laughs> yep. I drop him. <laughs> All right. You just drop him and keep running. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I do. Okay, go ahead and take <laughs> another point of damage, Trego. All right. Man, you're really getting beat up here. So Trego, you you come too, and uh, these guys just dropped you, and you guys start heading now towards um, over this direction towards the cart. Um, the old man's not there anymore. We'll get rid of him. Uh, you, but you're moving more towards this cart here. And as you guys uh, just get close to the cart, now you, you're, you're sort of coming out of the smoke. The smoke has been engulfing the entire street. Um, and, and you suddenly freeze. Because in the dim light of the partial moon, you faintly make oh, out... Oh, it's still dark out? It's still, yeah, it's still dark out. So this out. is like the not, middle of the night? It's not quite morning yet, yeah. No, it's right before, right before sunrise. Probably like 3, 4 in the morning? Yep, something like that, right? Yeah. You suddenly make out a line of frenzied horses galloping in your direction, each with a rider bellowing out a horrific war cry. And suddenly, oh no! Roll this. Okay, that was good. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 an arrow flies right past your head, Groggle, and smacks into the cart, lodges itself into the cart, uh, so just misses you and uh, dangerously close to your head. And and suddenly. Fear grips you as all of you look and you realize that a raiding party is now bearing down upon you with deathly haste. Do we know how many? Take a perception roll. And where am I? Am I? Am I just... <laughs> Actually, this is a good place. We'll get back to the bowl right now. 20. Okay. 20. Okay. You see immediately five riders. <laughs> coming directly oh, at you okay. and let's so, pause there let's pause there for a second we'll run to bolin bolin you wake up on on the bank of the river just past uh, uh the archway should we not be listening to this are we good uh this is okay yeah this is okay yeah. you you wake up uh on the Swimming bank swimming again mr bolin with your head uh quite um hurt actually and bolin uh i forgot this but you actually took three points of bludgeoning damage from that head head wound so write that down. And you wake yeah. up now and you hear this this loud horn warning. The alarm has been sound. And, and, and you look all around. And what do you want to do, Bolin? I'm just going to shake my head in, in, in amazement and realize that that actually happened. <laughs> and it wasn't some horrible, horrible nightmare. 
did you just have sex with two chicks at the same time? I'm not sure. I'm just gonna look around. What and 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 is there anything around me? Are there any like, is there any people that I can see, or is there where's the smoke and or what's what's happening? So you're underneath the archway, um, at the base of the archway. Okay. Uh, you you sort of drifted off around the archway, and you look around, and behind you there is a, there's a building, um, and, and and there's some some different things. But give me uh give me an investigation check there with disadvantage because of your head. With disadvantage. You roll two, you have to take the lowest. Is that what it is? Yeah, yep. you roll two. Take so the 16, I rolled a 15 and a 13 Whoa. plus three. Nice. So actually, you, you see this building, and up on the side of the building, about 20 feet up on the building, um, you see a platform. And leading up to the platform, built out of the cliff face, out of the rock, is actually a set of stairs leading up to this platform. And you see there's etched into, this, into the cliff, in the rock, is a, a weaving stairway that makes itself up uh, the side of the cliff face up to a brick sort of structure that leads you into the north gate of of the actual Mittendorf right. settlement. I'm going to run up as okay. fast as I can. So you head up the stairs, you come cruising back and forth, and you make yourself your way up into uh, the uh, the entrance of the gate. So you're actually in the north gate at this point, uh, and you come up, and where there normally would be soldiers there, uh, because it's it's fortified and guarded. There's it's now soldiers running in every which direction, and you hear them screaming. You hear them screaming, "Raiders! We got raiders! We got raiders!" The horn once again, and you look down to the left, and standing right there between you and your friends, Groggle, Niv, and Trago, who's a little bit loopy, you see five riders galloping directly towards them. Okay, so I'm on the opposite side. You're now on the opposite side. So, it, Matt, can okay. you put miniatures up to kind of? Absolutely. Maybe just one so, for the raiding party, and so the party, you... so the raiding party is in between us and me, or you and you and I. Can you? Uh, you can see these if I put them here. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. So we got a raiding party here, five of them. Yeah. You just came out of this gate here. Oh, the rest of you guys are here, here, and here. And now here's the question for you guys. Do you want to go ahead and do a combat now, or do you want to end for the night here? End for the night? Well, I... No, I'm, at... I, I no. want to keep going. Okay. Yeah, right. You're at 10 o'clock right now. It's Let's go you. ahead and roll initiative well, you, then. All of you, you guys... Wanna... If you want to be done, that's fine. But no, I don't. I got I another want... hour. Okay. I, want I only, I only yes. have an hour. Okay. I want to take this combat. Okay. Let's everybody roll initiative. Let's do this. Uh, Again, am I taking? Night. Shut your mouth, man. Am I taking man. like a, a disadvantage, or because I'm kind of like loopy and unconscious, or? Well, be okay, actually, on your um, on your normal, your normal roll there. Yeah, well, remember, you got a, you got a, you got a, a modifier right by yep, your. You have an, in, you have a initiative bonus. <laughs> yeah. Twelve for me. All right, so let, let me get these numbers down. Um, let's see, Groggle, you have a 12? Yep. Okay. So it's Niv. just the, the, the 20, right? You have you D20, have and a... then add your um, initiative bonus. It should be on the very top. You have a little thing that says initiative bonus. Oh, right, okay. Or initiative, yeah. Or initiative, yep. Seven. Mm. Oh, wow. Great job, okay. Niv. Niv, Thanks seven. Thanks for the group. I'm sitting okay. at nine. Pretty You're terrible. sitting at nine, okay? I'm I got a nine. I think I'm I... gonna go grab Adam's dice. I got new dice, and I'm not happy with the way they're rolling. So <laughs> I, go I got a ni- I got a nineteen. Oh, nice! Wow. Okay. Um, and they rolled a sixteen. So um, let's see. Bolin, you come up into the middle of the street, and you see these five uh, these five horses riding straight towards your friends. You, my friend, have the first. Turn that that cone so, of fire that you almost killed me with. Great time to use that. <laughs> so what? How how far am I from? It, what's the distance between me and like Groggle and Trago? Oh man, I forgot my measuring sticks. But um, you are going to be. Oh, that's got to be a good forty feet, probably. Yeah, I think you're probably about. Let's see. Okay. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. You're about thirty feet from the horses. So you're actually you're okay. probably more like sixty feet from Groggle. Okay. Um, 
And you said it's is it dark right now? Can I see pretty easily or you can because you have night vision, right? Dark yeah, vision? but if I if if I didn't have night vision, would it be difficult to see? Would then I know you, that? You would have you would have difficulty seeing. You'd have disadvantage okay. on your on your um, range attacks for sure. Okay, uh, I am okay. So I'm gonna cast fairy fire. Fairy fire, uh, okay. Um, which will outline every everybody within twenty feet oh, of brilliant. everybody within twenty feet of where the ra the raiders are. So in a cube form. Yep. They'll, everybody. So everybody's going to be outlined in green. Okay. Awesome. So they'll be uh, easier to see if it, as long as they fail a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Let me go ahead and, and try that out. Dexterity. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, yes, they definitely failed it. So so you cast a spell and bzzz, this amazing effervescent green light suddenly um, and shrouds uh, surrounds all five of these warriors and suddenly now you guys see with a brilliant bright light your targets, um, which now is going to help you guys and, as well attack. And any attack roll will now have advantage. Advantage on attack rolls. So yes. every attack roll gets advantage now. Nice. Is that the two? As dice? long as. As long yeah. as we're in, yes. And actually, as long as you can see it, as long as so, you can see them, you you get an advantage. So technically, because it's dark, you guys would have had disadvantage. But I forgot that the entire village is burning, so there's plenty of light. So uh, the advantage disadvantage would have canceled each other out. But now you guys all have advantage on your attack. Not just straight, straight up advantage. Yep. Okay, so uh, that is the end of Bolin's turn. Do you want to move anywhere? And then, so yeah. So uh, that's my action, that was and then action, I'm yep. going to. With my movement, I'm going to try and kind of run up around them to try and make it to every uh, everybody else. 5, Dude. 10, 15, 20, 25. You can get about there. You can get behind them. But they're at okay. that, but they're balls no, the wall, uh, he heading for us, right? I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you zoom in a little bit at all? Oh, God. Or no? Don't make them work. Uh, maybe. <laughs> can try. <laughs> I can come down a little bit. I don't know if that helps. Does that go help a little? A third, go more at a third-person perspective, Matt. Can you angle it a little? I can try. I could take it off uh, if you want me to. I can take it off and put it like right in the action, but then you might lose your overview. Uh... Also, will you make your wife a sandwich? <laughs> well, I make my wife a sandwich. I don't know. Does that help at all, Bolin? Yeah, that's good. Um, it's it's fine. I a mean, if it's bit? a big deal, don't worry about it. Uh, I mean, I can see it. I can see it fine. Okay. They don't know you're there, though. Yeah, they they're don't on, know I'm horses, there. No, right? you you've got you've got you get, you're surprised coming behind them, so they have no idea okay. you're there. But right, so, I, I mean, yeah, suddenly they gonna... realize. They've been illuminated, so they suddenly realize that something is is going on. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. I just want to sneak up behind them. I want to hide somewhere um, that's close to them, but is somewhat protected as well. All right, we'll uh, we can send you over to this turn. over to this wall here. Uh, yeah, you can probably I'll get, just hug, get the, I'll just hug the wall. Okay, cool. Um, the Raiders are going to. Um, let's see. We're going to have them ride in. Actually, uh, we're going to have one. Uh, let's see. Five, ten, 25. Yeah, that's the work. Um, we're going to have three of them ride in, and we're going to have two of them take uh, ranged attacks onto Groggle. Uh, let's see. What is your AC, Groggle? 18. 18. First one just misses. Second one just misses. So the two arrows from the first two miss. The other three come riding in. Uh, we're going to have the first one here is going to take a, 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 a strike at you with, uh, with his... With his um, Let's see, what does he want to use? A short sword. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, 16, another miss. You have an 18 AC. Mm -hmm. Wow. You did That's it. so high. <laughs> nice. Oh, I'm a fighter. Uh, next guy in the middle here is going to come against Niv, uh, and he's going to hit with a 12. Niv, what do you have for AC? 13. 13. So that's another miss. He comes and swings and he also misses. Man, these guys are just, I mean, they must have been like, they must be shaken because of, of this, this fairy fire spell that was cast. Last one comes to you, Trago, and he's going to strike. And there, I'm sorry to say, is a natural 20. Ow. <laughs> crit, crit, so, crit. He's, he's laying down, right? I need, I need Twice the dice. dice. Um, uh, is oh, is Trago prone? 
So Trago, uh, Trago yeah. was able to get himself up on his feet um, at this point. Are you on your feet, Trago, or are you still prone? That's a good question. I, I, if I would have been able to get up, if I would have been able to get up, I would have gotten up. Like he would have stood up. So it, it's up to you, you know what? Yeah. Let's say you actually yeah. we're still we're prone. Let's roll that with disadvantage yeah. then. Um, so <laughs> the, the the third one comes and tries to swing down on the ground yeah. because you're lying on the ground, and he misses with a. Three plus, uh, yeah, so a six. He misses there. So uh, because you're lying on the ground, uh, yeah. he misses. Nice so that's save, the end man. of the soldier's turn. Groggle, yeah. you're up. Well, I'm basically lying on the ground. All anyway, right. So I'm, I'm like going to pull out my morning fall. star and take a swipe, a swing at the nearest one. Okay, the one right in front of you. Go for it. Natural 20. Oh, oh my shit. gosh. Nice. Twice. Twice the dice then. You roll twice the dice. <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah, uh, savage attack on a critical hit with a melee weapon. Okay, so that is 1d8 plus 7. Twenty-two. Oh, oh <laughs> Took his head 1d8 off. 1d8 plus 7? Yeah, because I... Oh. Oh. Because I'm, okay. I'm, I'm... It was a critical, I, so you double the, you double the attack, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah. You, Twice the the dice. So, so as it, he comes rolling in, well, twice you the take, dice or twice the, twice the bonus. So twice the dice. Okay, so eight. Uh, so you you actually take, only fifteen. Yeah. So you okay, roll only two 15. dice. You roll two. You two roll two one d eight. Remember oh, you. Okay. So that first one was roll four. advantage too. Eleven. Oh, with uh, eighteen. Yeah. With advantage. 18. eighteen. Okay, eighteen is enough. As he comes cruising up to you, uh, and, and he pulls out his weapon to strike you, he misses you and just rides slightly next to you. And and as he comes right behind you, you take your morning store out and slice across, nailing him on the head. He flies off of his horse down on the ground. He is out, done. Okay, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Do you want to move at all? No, he's, uh, no. he's moving to yeah, the toilet. He's... Yeah. All right, Trago, let's go ahead. You're up. Now you are. Okay, prone. so how? Yeah, how addled am I? Am I? Am I like halfway like messed up still? Probably. I would. Well, think. Let's say this: if you want to get up, it's going to be half your movement to get up to a standing position. Um, you can do that, and that takes away half of your movement ability. And I'll we'll say this: I'll let you attack like normal, but with disadvantage. But because you have advantage, it'll be a normal attack. Okay, so what I'm going to do then? Thanks to fairy fire. That's an awesome spell. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, I'm gonna throw a dagger. Okay. Um, but I want to throw it at. So which one? Which horse? Oh, is... sorry, this one's gone. Okay, am, am I in the middle <laughs> or am I in the bottom there? You are this guy right here on the, okay. on the bottom. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it at the horse. You throw it at the horse. I'm gonna okay. throw a dagger at the horse. Try to hit it in the chest. Because I'm assuming there is something equal to like getting run over by a fucking horse that's charging for damage. So I'm going to throw the dagger at the horse and I okay. get, uh, I don't get sneak attack. Right. Uh, I don't get let's that see. One. Um, you are, I don't next. have it. I, yeah. Cause we're not, I don't have advantage, so I don't get, so it's just a regular attack. But you have, you have a guy within five feet of you, uh, an ally within I, five feet of you. So, uh, who's also attacking, uh, over here. So you okay. actually do, you would get a sneak attack because so I do get, I do I thought it was just if they were distracted, like if they were fighting the other. Yeah, if they're engaged with another yeah, person engaged, and like you roll Eric around behind them. Somebody, yeah, because that's, oh, that's, that's true. That's true. Because that's true. Because Niv is engaged with um, this guy. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Niv's not engaged with him. You're okay. right. So, yeah, you're, you're right. You don't get a sneak attack then. Uh, so I rolled a 12 and I'm rolling with my dagger for a plus six attack bonus. Right. Yeah, because you get your um, you get your dexterity bonus on the dagger. It's a finesse. Yeah, weapon. so a sixteen, or 16. Uh, eighteen. I'm sorry, eighteen. Oh, yeah. That's a hit. Yep. All right, so a dagger a does one d four plus four. Come on. So what did I miss? Uh, Trago oh, got up off six. the ground and he's now. Attacking. I did six damage to the horse. I was throwing at the horse. Okay. Um. Let me see if. Uh... Oh. Oh <laughs> no way. So... Probably not. The horse, you, you connect with the horse right, uh, right where it counts, right between the eyes, and the horse collapses, <laughs> and the rider falls off. The rider's still going to be able to attack you, but he is going to take uh, five bludgeoning damage. 
so he falls down and sort of collapses. The horse goes down on his knees. Uh, he rolls out, and he's now uh, lying next to you, uh, trying to get himself up off the ground. He's not on a horse anymore, but he's going to be able to attack you. All right. Is there anything else you want to do on your turn, Trigo? Uh, can I do the... What is it called? Nimbleness. I can move through the space of any creature at least one size larger. Right? So can I move through? I want to get behind. You could. Yeah, you oh, could. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that. I want to get behind them and just okay. position myself. And you only, have, you only have 15 feet of movement left because you were prone. You used oh, 15 to get prone. up. So actually 15 will – oh, it will just get you through I think. Let me see. 5, 10, 15. Yeah, it will just get you to the back side of the, of the horse. Yeah, I basically like to just you – know, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> you're you're like yeah. just as big as his butt now. Yeah. Your your face is like right in the horse's butt. <laughs> you're a horse's ass, Chad. Mm. <laughs> All right, end of Trago's turn. Niv, <laughs> what did you want to do? Great, drink? It's great Chad, role playing. Niv, what do you want to do? That's exactly man? what I would do. Chad, what did you just drink? Uh, I'm, last night. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, cast mage armor. Oh, oh that's myself. fucking gross. Cast mage armor myself. Okay, that'll be your uh, your main action. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. So, gross. so my AC um, is now sixteen. Awesome. Do you Whiskey. want to um, do any movement or anything night? else? Um. Because <laughs> if if I move, does that guy attack me? Is he right up <laughs> beside me? He's right up on you. Yeah. For that. You can move away from him, but he will get an attack of opportunity if you move away. Uh, no, I'll, 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 well, disengage is an action, though, right? Yeah, yeah right. If, if you move away from him, though, he'll get an attack yeah, of opportunity. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just stay there after okay. I cast mage armor cool so so uh, suddenly this radiant light comes around niv and he you see that he's cast mage armor so now his his ac has just increased uh, to 16 now uh, because of the mage armor spell uh that brings us back to bolin we are in turn two okay how many okay so how, how many how many people are left there's four there's four of them left there's yep there's three that are left on the horses one guy is left on the ground okay I'm going to see everything that's going on here, and I am going to take out my holy symbol, which is the circular medallion. It's mm -hmm. it's bigger than a normal medallion is, but it's circular in shape, and instead of like a normal diamond or sapphire, it's a pearl that is almost octagonally carved it's not like a normal circular pearl. It's a, it's an octagonally carved inside this medallion, right? Nice, yeah. I'm gonna slam it onto the ground <laughs> as hard as I can, and and channel channel Lathander, who is the oh, god of light, oh, and use no. radiance and use radiance of the dawn. No way! What's your range on that? Uh, Thirty feet. Oh, man. So you're heading over to these guys then, these two guys that are here. Yep. So I'm going to go in between in between both both of all of them right there, kind of to the left. Yep. So right about there so I can get all four of them. And it's a 30 foot. Is that a 30 foot radius then? Yes. 30 foot radius or diameter? As an action, your holy symbol magic uh, within 30 feet of you. It's all Each radius. hostile it's all creature radius. within 30 feet. Oh, Each nice. hostile creature must make with uh, must make a Constitution saving throw. Okay, these this guy over here is uh, looks like he's out of range, but these two for sure will be within range. You want to cast it uh, cast it then on and have those two guys affected. Yep. All right. Uh, constitution save. Uh, let me see here. Um, what is your DC? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. First guy. Gets it with a 13. Second guy. Ah! 19 plus 120. He gets ah! it. So they, they make the save there. Uh, does that mean they take no damage or half damage? Uh, half as much on the successful. Uh, successful. Okay. So they so still they take still, damage. They still take damage. damage. Yep, yep. 2d10, uh, 2d10 plus 2. Gosh, that's an awesome spell. <laughs> uh, is this... This is a 2d10. 2d10 plus 2, and then half. Yeah, so 8. Oops, shit, that fell off. 
Eight, 16, so 18 points of damage. And then, and then half, right? So yeah, nine. nine okay. Whoa, nine that's still, I mean, so this radiant light comes off from this symbol, just and, and uh, it reverberates. You can see the airwaves sort of vibrating as the light just right through it and smashes into these two guys, uh, and they are hurting. Uh, you didn't finish them off, but they are struggling. They sort of fall off the side of their horses. They're still holding onto their horses on their mounts, but they are not doing well. Uh, soldiers are going to come back now. Um, we're going to have uh, this first guy. He's going to go ahead and continue. He's going to turn to um, to uh, you, Groggle, and he's going to attack, and that's going to be a miss. Our second guy now off of his horse. He's going to go for you, move into combat with you here, uh, Niv, and he's going to attack, and that is going to be uh, an 18, and that will be a hit on you, right? Yeah. You're going to have a 16, so that is going to be... Uh, 1d6 plus 1, 5 damage to you. 5 slashing damage. So he comes in with his sword and just slashes right on the side of your arm and slashes you open. How are you doing, Niv? I am at 2 hit points. 2 hit points, okay. (laughs) So that is, uh, let's see, and then we have the other two soldiers. Um, They are going to move in both to Groggle. Sensing that Groggle is the strongest one. First one is going to take a an attack, that is a miss, and the second one is also going to miss. Groggle. You guys got your fancy <laughs> magic, but... Groggle's I'm... doing like this, Groggle's doing like this Neo-Matrix thing. He's like... <laughs> and the guys are just slashing <laughs> left and right, and Groggle's just, just putting up his hand. Like, oh, All no. right, so... No. So, so that is the end of the soldier's turn. Groggle, you're up. Now you have so um, do, three guys do around. Of, does anybody have disadvantage from how hurt they are, or from where they're well, standing? You have a, you have. I know. I, I know. But I want to go. I want to go out the strongest one, the one that has the most likely to to hit us. The strongest one on the is going to be no. um, is the guy with the most hit points, who's right here. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a swipe at him. All right, go for it. And you have action sir. Natural so, twenty. Natural whoa. twenty. No way. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> take your camera off and show. All right, man. Roll. Roll your damage. Extra Come die on. there. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> You can't, can't see it. it. Oh, for it's God's sake. I see, well, I see so the eight. eight. The yeah, okay, I see the eight. You're right. I'm looking at my die. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. That's roll awesome. that damage. Roll that damage. So it's... Uh, Holy crap, Groggle. 2d8 plus seven, right? Because you don't you don't double the modifier, just the... Dang. No, you, d- you just double the dice. Yeah. Okay. One of these guys is going to fucking die. <laughs> Six plus... Six, 12 plus seven is uh, 19. <laughs> oh, so you just nail once again the morning star just <laughs> in. not only do you hit the guy but you his head. smash through his body and into the horse's head the horse falls prone the guy <laughs> is done boom all right you he doesn't fall on me too. does he i'm not done yet i'm gonna use action surge oh take no addition, yes take an additional action on your turn wait a minute were you able, you able to get a long rest that's short rest you get it back on a short rest. It says either one. Short oh, rest. perfect. Okay, well then take it. Well, now you got me questioning. Hold on. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to cheat. It's no fun if you cheat. Well, by the way, in the um, Trouble and Thanger <laughs> store, you can soon buy the uh, I Pull Up My Mace t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Slash once you use this feature, you start. must finish a short or long rest before oh, you use it again. Yep, nice. Good. So you get it back on a right. short rest. Awesome. Wow, I thought that's uh, 20, 23. <laughs> hit. No, no, no. Hold, no, not 20. Yeah, 23. Hit. It definitely hit. Okay, so I get the double damp. No, no it double damage. I thought this was going to be a hard combat, but Groggle apparently is just. Is oh, wh- eight. I rolled a one. Eight, eight damage. Eight damage. Well, eight is actually going to be enough. So you, uh, I mean, these guys are really hurting. Uh, eight is actually enough to take that guy out. So sure you did. Are you sure you did my character right? I, I did actually. Yeah, you, you're incredibly strong. strong. Uh, I mean, we <laughs> we put everything in strength for your character. Uh, so yeah, That's that guy dumbass. falls down on his uh, his knees and he is out. Starts to bleed yeah. out all over the cobblestone. Uh, and there's one guy left now who's engaged with Grog. Is he still is he still alive and bleeding out or? Um, this guy right here is still alive. The other guy's gone. So the guy engaged with Grog is still there. Um, 
and the other guy is gone. And yeah, what about so, the guy that I knocked off his horse? Did we he, kill him already? He got he got eliminated. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. He's actually engaged with Niv. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. He's still yeah, right. pounding on Niv. Uh, so there's right. one guy left off his horse, and then there's one guy uh, with his horse left. And um, Groggle, do you want to move uh, or do anything else, or do you want to stick where you are? If you'll let me move in between Niv and the other guy, I will. Oh, that's a good question. Um, or I'll move, I'll move that direction. You move towards um, Niv. I want to be in between Niv and the other soldier. All right. We'll I, that's we'll close to it. I'll tell you what. Um, we'll say you can push him out of the way a little bit. If he wants to, he can always move back into combat with Niv again. Uh, so I say Grog with your brute force, you're able to push your way into that combat. And now you're engaged with the guy who's no longer on his horse. Uh, the end of Groggle's turn. Trago, you're up. Okay. Uh, at first, I'm going to yell. I can just, I can talk, right? Yeah, you can, you can like, speak. As a free, a, like, a, I want to yell, like, keep one alive. Action. I want to keep one alive. Keep one alive. And, and so, hold on here. I That's can't. a good idea. I didn't think of that. Can you, uh, so the horseman, <laughs> and which one is the other bad guy? Can you point to the, the other yep. the guy? Here's the horseman. the horseman. Here's the other bad guy right here. Okay. Um. Or good guy. Maybe you guys are the yeah, bad guys. <laughs> right, maybe. So I'm going to go after the horse guy. So I already threw one knife. And is he engaged with one of our... Is he engaged with Eric or Niv? Or oh, is he, still, is he charging? That's right, Groggle. You left the combat there. I forgot. He gets, yeah. a, he gets an attack of opportunity. I totally forgot about that. Let right. me roll that out. Uh, and that's a miss anyway. <laughs> so when you left Groggle, he missed you anyway. Um, so now, My yeah. name's Groggle. So now, now, now Trago, you're engaged with the horse, the rider now, the cavalry. All right, so uh, I'm going to I can't gonna wait kinda, to edit that, like, that face. No. I can't. Oh, I'm man. I'm going to move up a little bit, and I'm going to, again, throw uh, a knife at the horse. I have my okay. second knife. Go for and it. And I'm going to try to knock the horse out. All right. And I missed. Okay. It was... Is bad. <laughs> well, no, okay, four. Tim, are you okay? Plus, uh, what am I looking at here? My dagger, uh, ten. It's not that far. So, uh, so that was a miss then, yep. Yeah, yep. that's a miss. All right, so that and is then, the end of your yeah. turn. Niv, you are up now. The man Wait, do with I have the advantage on that guy? Um, you did have, have advantage. advantage on him? You did have advantage, yeah. yeah. Hold that again, man. Okay, here. Yeah, we're all supposed to have it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Because of fairy fire. plus four. All right, so, yeah. <laughs> well, then roll that out. That's a hit. Yeah, that's a hit. Uh, one, d d d d d d d d one D4 plus four. Oh, roll high, six. roll high. Six damage. Yep. So you, damage. you, are you throwing your dagger or you, you, you striking it? I'm throwing the dagger at the horse. You're throwing the dagger like at the running, horse. I'm running horse. forward and I'm throwing the dagger at the horse. Oh, at the to horse. To knock him off. At the horse. Okay, yep. Because we need to keep one alive. So you, you hit the horse, um, and the horse stumbles again, um, takes six damage, uh, and the horse is, it, it, he doesn't stumble like he did last time, uh, so he's actually okay, uh, and the rider is still on the horse, but the horse uh, takes a good, a good shot from that dagger. End of your turn, Trago. Niv, you are up. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I am going to cast Ray of Sickness. Ray of Sickness. On... Um, uh, I think the guy that attacked me. Okay, the guy who, who's not on his horse anymore. This guy right here. Right. Yep. yep. Uh, so that is. Let me check my sheet here. So that should be a plus six, right? So this is a, an attack uh, spell, not a yeah. DC save spell, right? Yeah, 16. Okay, you rolled a 16. That is a hit. All right. Oh, I didn't get that. I got to get the right dice out. So that should be 2d8. 2d8. Poison oh, damage. Wow. <laughs> nice. So a 3 and an 8. A 3 so 11. and an 8. 11 total. Yeah. That's exactly what you needed. So you... Cast Ray of Sickness and this is a disgusting sort of fog comes out, <laughs> covers him, and he starts choking from the poison. Oh wait, Actually, <sighs> I, I can't. Down. I can't cast Ray of Sickness. I don't have it prepared. 
You don't have a hand. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna cast. Witch bolt. Oh man, that was a great spell. Instead, <laughs> I do have I do have witch bolt prepared. All right, do so it then. <laughs> do we want to use the same hit or reroll the hit? Uh, you I can. You um, gotta reroll, dude. It. You reroll yeah, it. Yeah, re reroll it. Reroll it. Uh, so that's an 18 then. 18, even better. So that hits as well. <laughs> that's 1d12. Uh, what kind of armor are they wearing? They are wearing, uh, you can see they're wearing leather armor. Okay. Oh, cocked. Three. <laughs> um, three damage. Three damage this turn, um, but each of my additional turns, uh, I can keep it, keep it rolling on them. Okay. So there's there's a slight fizzle that comes from your hand, something like a uh, like licking a nine volt, like licking a nine volt battery, <laughs> and it it kind of and the, it kind of catches the guy off guard as if he'd fallen off his horse. But but every little bit of damage helps. So Niv, good job. Uh, do you want to do anything else with your turn? Uh, I'm going to move further away. Which bolt okay. has a range of thirty feet, so I don't want to move more than. Uh, I don't know, fifteen feet. If if you move, he gets an attack of opportunity. Well, he's not he's not close to me though. Oh, you're Eric, right. Right, Eric came you're in right. Brocco moved in, and you're right. So you're gonna move yeah. back. Uh, you're gonna move back thirty feet. No, just fifteen, I think, because I don't want him to get out of range. What are the rules on movement after you've taken an action in a combat? Well, you can game? you can you can split up your movement however you want. So you can use yeah. you can use five feet. You can use uh, ten later. No, but I mean, if you take an action. Like swiping your sword or attacking, doesn't that reduce you both, how much don't you, you move? Well, no, actually, no. You you get um you get your chunk of movement. So most of you have thirty feet, uh, and you get that thirty feet, and then you get an action in addition to that. So you can do oh, fifteen okay. feet, take an action, do fifteen more feet. You can do thirty feet. You can do nothing. Uh, so you you okay. can treat movement like a separate thing. Uh, so it's not it's not an action. Can you? I only, can you... I only have twenty five feet of movement. I'm sh I'm sorry. I'm short. Could you do? Can you Don't do like ten, change. ten, and ten, or does it have to be two movements only? Well, I mean, you you can split up. You can use your movement, then use an action, and then use your movement again. Um, so I mean, you could do ten and then another ten, but if you're going to do twenty, you might as well just do twenty then all together. Right. So you couldn't do like ten feet, ten feet, ten feet, because you could do ten feet, feet an action, and then like attack or spell, okay. and then ten more feet or twenty more feet, whatever. Okay. Uh, so you can split it up. Sometimes, you, I mean, you have a bonus action. You could do ten feet. For example, 10 feet action, 10 feet bonus action, 10 feet. Yeah. Oh, shit. I got a bonus action, don't I? So right. that's the end of Niv's turn. You are now 15 feet away. Right. Bolton, we are back to you. Turn three. Niv, can right. uh, one second. I, I was taking the leak. Uh, did Niv kill one of the guys or? Nope. He just no. He would have if he had that spell prepared, but he, he moved yeah. back and uh, cast he lightning moved. bolt. And <laughs> okay. He just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He just kind of wig, so wiggled those fingers so and didn't do anything. Yeah, so right. still two guys left, right? Damage. It hurt him a little bit. Every every so, bit helps. Hey, at this point, <laughs> I know. Do we know that Niv is a caster? Yeah, I mean, obviously you've seen. It's okay, yeah, obviously lightning's yeah. coming yeah. out of my fingers. Yeah. so you've got a sense All now right. that he's a magic kind of guy. Yep, for sure. <clears throat> so Bolin, you're up. Um, so there's two guys left, right? There are two guys left. That's correct. Okay. Uh, which guy is looking more hurt? Um, it, it looks like um, yeah, they're they're about equally as hurt, but the guy on the on the horse looks a little more bloodied. All right, I'm gonna aim for that guy and, and cast um, Sacred Flame. What's your range on that one? Fifteen feet. Sixty feet. Sixty feet. Whoa. Okay, yeah. so Sacred Flame, sixty feet. Go for it. It's You're not gonna a, hit uh, me, are you? Nope. It's just a. Uh, Flame-like radiance within range. And you target target. must succeed on a dexterity saving throw, or right. take one d8. Dex. Let me let me roll my dex here. Okay. Um, and your your DC is spell DC the is D spell DC is thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> so one d8. Oh man. One d8. Two. Two points of Two. damage. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it doesn't kill him. He takes a little more damage. Uh, <laughs> but he, he's, he's doing okay. Bolin, do you want to do anything else on your turn? Um, nope. 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna back up a little. I'm just gonna back up a, a tiny bit, like five feet. Okay. No, no, oh wait, that's where I am. Oh yeah, shit. you're okay. way over there. Then I'm I'm gonna move up like twenty feet. Okay. Like something yeah, like that. That's yeah. That's per. That's perfect. Okay. Um, soldier's gonna go now. Uh, we're gonna have first of all, we're gonna have this guy come here and and strike back at, at uh, Groggle, and he's going to roll. No, that's a miss. Uh, so he goes flying off. The second guy is going to strike at you, Trago. And that is a 20. 17 plus 3, 20. And that's a hit. That is uh, a hit. That is a hit. And he is going to do a total, oof, six slashing damage to you. Uh, all right. Oh, so he's still got some life left in him. He reaches down and yeah. slashes down at you. Six slashing damage. How are you standing now? I'm at seven right now. You're at seven. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. So I'm... I'm not doing great. Okay. All right. Um, that is the end of the soldier's turn. They're going to stick where they are. Um, Groggle, you're up. All right. Take a slice at the one that is in front of me. All right. Ooh. ooh. You have advantage, Only... remember. Oh. Two of them, right? Yep. 22. 22. That's a hit. Yeah, he's he's dead. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> plus yeah. seven on your 15 <laughs> yeah. yeah so you I mean, you, you crush his you head crush off crush his helmet and he just <laughs> falls falls to the ground this guy is completely gone okay. um, we have one guy left Boland or uh, sorry sorry Groggle do you want to do anything else uh where's Ooh. the other guy the other guy is right over here do you want to move towards him or who's who's engaged with him now right now we have Trago I want to. I want to move. Understanding that it's an op, uh, attack of opportunity, I want to move in between Trago and the other guy. I'll do the same thing. Yep. All right. Once again, I don't know. We'll house rule this. I don't know if that's a rule or not, but we'll just say you you plow your way in between the two of them, uh, and you're able to get between them now. Okay, but he gets it a two attack though. What's that? He gets to attack though. Uh, an attack of opportunity. Yeah. It's yeah. when you. That's just, oh, that only seems fair. No, oh, let's do that then. Um, and that is a miss. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. So. <laughs> no, that's definitely a miss. <laughs> Man, these guys like are crap. horrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's the end of uh, Groggle's turn. Trago, you're up. Okay, so... You want to move back into combat now that Groggle came and pushed you out? <laughs> well, I have a sneak attack. How? Uh... No, Matt clarified that. You didn't read the... You didn't see the post. Actually, if no. you're engaged with him, though, he he can move into combat and get a sneak attack but, there. So so I'm stealthy because I'm ex, I'm obscured by Eric right now. So I'm stealthy already, right? So that gives me advantage. You already have advantage because of the fairy yeah. fighter. So you get sneak attack because yeah. you have advantage. So what I would like to do is again, I want to keep one of them alive. Okay. And I'd like I'd like to go after the horse with uh shit. I don't have a dagger anymore. I threw my you two daggers. To run it. Fuck. You have to run, back, run to the to the horses and pull them back. <laughs> well, I can do I can do like the tum, uh, 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 what the hell is it called? You want to do, do a grapple? I can do a nimbleness. I can move through a space of any creature at least one size larger. So I can move through Eric and I can attack the horse. Yeah, I can I can and I can attack the horse. Okay. I want and, and I want to say like we got to keep him alive. We need to know what he learned. What, keep him know, alive! Kind of, you shout again. Yep. Yeah. All right, so better hope my turn doesn't come up again. And I get the nimbleness <laughs> off automatically. Right? <laughs> so I I roll the thirteen. My uh, rapier is plus six, so nineteen. Boom! So you you move through I'm, Groggle I'm and you Groggle. smack the horse. Roll damage. And I'm going for hit. the going for the horse on my rapier, and That's that does that count as a sneak attack then? Does I have advantage? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you'll have sneak attack. Yep, you have sneak attack on this. Oh, roll an extra d6. Oh, shit. Hey, hold on here. Uh, the horse is dead. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, one and an eight. Oh, eight plus four. Yeah, uh, 12. 12. Okay, so you you slide through with your rapier and slice it right into the side of the horse, and the horse just uh, falls down. I mean, that's a horse is selling it. <laughs> <laughs> the Game of Thrones, basically. <laughs> the, the horse, the horse sort of falls down to its knees, and the rider now falls off, and he's going to take a total of ow. Wait, that was the wrong die. Sorry, let me roll the right die. Twenty points of damage. <laughs> Twenty points of damage. 
points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. He takes four points of bludgeoning damage and falls down unconscious. So uh, the last of the soldiers now is unconscious. And you guys are now surrounding them. Uh, or him, I should say, with a bunch of bloodied bodies all around you. That is the end of combat. He's out. And there's nobody else around us? Um, not that you can see at this moment. You can take an investigation check if you want. I'm going to push. I mean, I'm going to tell, tell Groggle to drag his body into the well and wake him up. Yeah. I failed my investigation attempt. Who, uh, whose body yeah. am I dragging? Or is he unconscious? unconscious. The guy yeah. that's unconscious. So he, he's this guy and, and wake him up in the well. Yeah, I'm, I still, I'm say we I still don't alive. trust. I don't trust him. I'm not. No, I'm gonna say we need him alive. Like, keep him, keep him alive. Listen, yeah. if you want to ask this guy questions, he needs to be awake. You're the strongest one of us, so just take him and throw him in the well. All right, I'm gonna do a death save on him, uh, and he f passes that one. Um, if you guys want to keep him alive, I would suggest you try a medicine check uh, on him to see if you can pull that off. If you I want to keep him alive, right, Tim, I can cast Cure Wounds. Who wants to give him a potion? Wounds. Who wants cure, I'll cast potion? Cure Wounds. I'll cast oh. Cure Wounds on him, okay? No, give him the potion. That sounds like more fun. <laughs> oh. Oh, the, oh, the Mittendorf merriment? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's a great <laughs> idea. I'm Chad, gonna put Chad came up with it. <laughs> so you, you gonna, bring him over I'm here by the... mouth and dump the bottle of Mittendorf <laughs> merriment. <laughs> you dump the bottle of Mittendorf merriment into his mouth. Uh, let me see what happens here. <laughs> I gotta get out my Mittendorf merriment chart. All right, I gotta roll a d20 here. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ooh. We're gonna ooh, kill him. Ooh. We turned um, him into the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't low enough that it doesn't hurt him, but uh, it's the potion is a dud. Uh, nothing happens. <laughs> it's, a, it's, like drinking, it's like drinking water. Nothing happens. So he gains back no okay. hit points. Okay, well, <laughs> and you're out I'm of trying, bottle. Guys. <laughs> you're out of bottle. Of I'm not giving him mine. All right, I'll I'll cast cure wounds on him, and I say we'll we'll deal with yeah. this blind uh, this blind guy, this blind vendor uh, tomorrow when uh, all this and, gets and, resolved. And, but you mean once right now we need this guy. Up? Right now we need this guy alive. Shows up? So I'll cast cure wounds on him. So I'll do. Um, as he's casting cure wounds, I'm gonna pull out my. Do I, like how? Because I had my rapier and my daggers. Mm -hmm. Where's like? Do I have my bow then? Because yep. Dan had all my shit. Can I grab? Can I grab my bow and? Yeah, grab your bow. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> and I'm gonna. I'm gonna grab my bow and like kind of get it ready to go yep. point at that guy. Yeah, Matt. Okay. Matt. So I he need takes six I six need, points of healing. I need uh, six points. Okay. I need, I need uh ten seconds with. No one else on the line. Okay. okay. Six points of healing, yeah. yep. Okay. So when they're done, I'm going to kill them. I'm gonna okay. Pull a dagger. I'm going to pull a dagger out. No, actually, I'm just going to bludgeon with my morning star. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. When they're when they're done with this yeah. action. Okay. Yep. So <clears throat> I'll wait for these guys. They Danny. Connected. So, so Bolin, uh, the sort of energy comes out of his hands and moves into the body of this, this unconscious soldier. And you, you suddenly see this <gasps> as he comes back, uh, looking actually quite well because uh, it was uh, actually a pretty decent recovery. Uh, and he, <gasps> he's panicking, looking around, panicked at all of you who are now standing above him. I'm going to put my foot on his throat, mm -hmm. kneel down to say... You better talk now, or there's going to be a much worse fate for you lying ahead. Yeah. Unless I, you're I, ready to talk. I take my morning star and I hit him in the throat and kill him. Oh, roll. Oh. Roll, an attack. roll an attack with advantage because he's prone. Uh, 30 something. <laughs> <laughs> roll damage. Uh, it wasn't 30 something, it was 22. Uh, 1d8. You have plus seven already. Fourteen. He's so, <laughs> so he's uh, he's out. He's dead. Um, seeing as you guys revivified him already, um, he's back unconscious. Um, it's possible if you want to try and bring him back again, uh, well, but it's going to be harder this I'm time. Casting cure wounds again. Yeah. And I'm 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 looking at Drago, and I'm like, you have to let us do this. <laughs> Wait to kill. Actually, no. I'm not yeah. going to cast that. I'm not. 
Uh, I'm going to I'm going to yell at Eric like you can't keep killing people that we need to talk. We need him alive. I will let you know when to kill him. The look I'm giving the camera right now is the look I'm giving uh. the groggles giving a except more green. So this guy is starting to can I, I mean, can he's I... definitely unconscious and now he's sort of slipping <laughs> away. For, like bringing him back and <laughs> him and <laughs> That's so sadistic. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha <laughs> dead. I, I, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I'm just playing my character, yeah. you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nim, oh my God. Nim. Danny, what do you got? Well, yeah, I was gonna say something, but I uh I'm gonna change my mind and I think I agree with Eric and I'm just gonna let him all right. Lay there unconscious. He takes another death save. Uh, he's dying. I'm not doing you anything. To, nope. You gotta let I'm him not, go. Let him okay. Die. Let him die. So as 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 he sort of you see him sort of slipping uh, from from consciousness, he starts to fade out and joins his other friends as the the pile of dead bodies around. Um, you're now standing around here with burning uh, buildings to your left and to your right, uh, and just as he fades away and dies. Um, as if being pierced in the ears by a sword, the sudden noise of an explosion reaches your ears as part a separate part of the raiding party breaks through the southern gate um, and is actually heading southward now out of the town. Uh, and they're quickly making their, their way uh, in the direction of Haldir. Um, and as you look through the firing flames and the confusion of the whirling raiding party, raiding party as they lead away, one rider nevertheless stands out from the rest. What appears to be a woman clothed in brilliant green. Her bright red hair is like sun, a sunburst as it radiates from her helmet as her deep green eyes scan the battlefield with confidence and an air of authority. She turns her head in the opposite direction. You guys catch just for a brief section, a sec, a second in the, in the flames, the light from the flames, you, you catch something of a marking extending up her neck and underneath her helmet on the left side of her ear. Perhaps a tattoo or a birthmark. It's difficult to see. She's riding too quickly and things are happening too quickly. Bolin, in your pocket, you immediately feel a blazing heat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> shit! Shit! No, I'm shit. Like... She gave you herpes, man. And you... <laughs> in, his, in his pocket... And you, you realize that the ring that you received in Haldu Harbor is now is burning to the touch. What ring? Wait. The ring, the ring that old guy gave me. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, Remember that old guy? I put it on and it hurt me? Yeah. So now you got the is, it on, is it like on fire or is it just... It's, it's burning and are, are you going to pull it out and look at it or... <laughs> uh, Don't need them yeah, on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna quick pull it out and just throw it on the ground. As, as, as you pull it out and you throw it on the ground, you look and you see that the the cryptic runes that were on the ring that you couldn't read before have now been extended. Lines have extended out of these uh, these these runes, and now uh, with these green lines, they begin to form an ancient script that appears somewhat familiar to you. Go ahead and give me an Arcana test. Do do the rest of us see this? Do we know? Yeah, what's you're all standing going there. On? Wow. Okay. Okay. I. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, it's not quite enough. You you, you can't <laughs> quite. Yeah. Yeah, just barely. You you can't quite make it out. Yeah, and it as, is as the lines start to fade um, back, and the ring starts to go dark again, and as if overtaken by a spell, the woman on the end of of the city stops. She turns and brings her mount to a halt and freezes in place. She's caught a glimpse of the party of adventurers, and now your eyes are locked on hers. Her lips curl slightly outward in confusion as she begins to speak. You're too far away to hear what she says, but the clash of swords and the footfalls of horses drone out any sound of her distant voice. And with a jerk on the rein, she thrusts her sword into the air above her head, barks out several orders, and turns to lead the rest of the raiding party south beyond the valley and into the yeah. safety of the darkness. And that is where we will end for tonight. Right.